Is something that we could probably get through without the need of a full, full complement of members. So, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call to order the meeting for the Rally Planning Board. Tonight's Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. Uh, <clears throat> tonight we have uh, a couple of new public hearing items. Uh, we have uh, an informal discussion regarding uh, a 40B project, and we have a couple of continued public hearings on the agenda. Uh, the first item is a new public hearing. I think I have an announcement that I need to read. Uh, is it uh, second gotcha. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm going to go through this. Pursuant to General Law Chapter 40A, Section 11, and General Law 41, Section 81T, and Massachusetts General Law 40A, Section 5, the Rally Protected Zoning Bylaw and the Rally Planning Board Rules and Regulation, notice is hereby given that the Rally Planning Board will open the following public hearing 
during the public hearing meeting held on Wednesday, October 13th, starting at 9 p.m., or pardon me, t uh, 7 p.m., in the Annex Building meeting room located at 39 Central Street Rally at the following times. The Board shall consider the, first, the following requests. The first item, pursuant to ZBL section 4.7.3, paragraph F and 7.8, a hearing for a special permit application uh, submitted by Mike Arsenal for Emily Skin Care so Soothers, Inc., applicant of 77 Turnpike Road, Ipswich, on behalf of Gateway Realty Trust, property owner of 239 Western Avenue, Essex, Massachusetts, for a warehouse and distribution facility located in Building 2 at 26 Forest Ridge Drive, also identified as Maps 7, Lot 9, and located in the Light Industrial, um, Business Light Industrial BLI Zoning District. So I'm going to uh, make a motion that we open the public hearing on this. Second. Okay, so my motion uh, to Jack second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 So the meeting is open. If we can just have for the applicant, Mr. Arsenal. Yes. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very good. So uh, we did receive your application. I understand you're just looking for a, it's a special permit requirement, right, Kirk? Yes. And uh, what type of business are you trying to uh, locate on the? In uh, basically, we make gentle skincare products mm -hmm. and uh, soaps and balms. Do you uh, manufacture at the site, or is it dist distribution or warehouse? A little of both. Very light manufacture. Uh, <clears throat> generally. Most of it's filling, and some of it we have made off-site and labeled, but we make some of the products there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the site we're talking about is obviously intended for this type of use. Right. It's already fully permitted, and, and it's, it's built out. So what, all we're here to do is consider whether this is an appropriate use for the space, mm -hmm. and that seems like, you know, initially what we're looking to do. Uh, we... Uh, Parking is always one of our considerations. Is that ample parking up there? But is, is, how many, you know, what type of impact are you going to make Almost on? Almost none. We have uh, three part time employees right now, and okay. as we grow, we would anticipate at most five full time employees. Okay. Yeah, there's a, in the packet, there's a, they go through the hours operation Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 p.m., uh, maximum of two uh, unit uh, pay post office pickups per day, three to five employees. Mm -hmm. uh, no customers will be coming to the site. Uh, building has full spring clear system, central tie, tie it in, which was signed off by the fire department. Um, uh, you, no storage of hazardous materials or chemicals or loud machines. So you might want to just like describe your... Yeah, actually whatever. I brought the ingredients list if anyone's interested of the products. Mm -hmm. um, we've been in 77 Turnpike in Ipswich for over 10 years. Never a single incident with mm -hmm. chemicals or anything like that. The base of the products, we make bombs and they're like a olive oil or sunflower oil base with beeswax and herbs cooked in. So okay. that's about it. That's it. Um, and as far as the cooking in, uh, what type, do you have propane on site or what do you do? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Just a simple gas stove. Um, Sometimes if it grows, we'll have a, a wax melting machine. Mm -hmm. But actually I'm taking, if it goes through, I'm taking two units, one next door from my acupuncture practice. So you can imagine, you know, if I'm going to be doing acupuncture next door, I understand that it's quiet, right. that there's no real smells or risk because that's what's you know that's what I'm doing in the next uh, unit over. Gotcha. So this is the the front <coughs> building right yep. here. Where is the is it in the back building or this? Oh, no, it's right up there in the front left hand corner. First left, so right and then the second one too. So these yep. two right. The yep. acupuncture okay. would be on the outside, and the other one would be there. Yep. Okay. Mr. Coughlin, based on the approval that you have, and maybe you can answer this too, but how many parking spaces per unit are you already? Did, were you required to build? <coughs> I believe at the time it was a square footage requirement. Right. <clears throat> uh, right now up there, and the parking kind of coincides with the front building and the back building. Uh huh. Gotcha. We currently have uh, 60 spots up there, which we're, we're not even halfway utilizing. We're in the process of building another building, fought right up hill of that mm -hmm. at 32 and I think there's going to be another 40 to 50, 50 spots in that building. Mm -hmm. And how many units are in that, this building? This Across the top you got eight units, okay. eight 1,500 square foot units. So that's 12, basically, uh, I don't know why I'm, uh, uh, what about seven, seven and a half spots per unit already. So if you've got two units, you got 15 spots right. and you're saying you're going to have a need of for maybe five. Tops. And uh, if you do our acupuncture, you still might see a couple of clients an hour. Yeah, two to three an hour. Uh, so that's not going to be a significant impact on any of that. We talked with Ken, the ac ac acupuncture running uh, unit number one, 
did not have to come before the board. It was this gotcha. unit, That's unit number two that drove the bus that's bringing us here tonight. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So we're not even here to even discuss, necessarily to discuss. It's no, helpful to know, though. And I think we're fine anyhow. Right. But uh, yeah. what do you guys think? It's good to me. Can we get, can we get, can yeah. we get that list? Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Well? Yeah, I only printed out three, but uh, and then some brochures just to show the general idea. Okay. Because I, I think that's just to make sure that, yeah, that we have that file. Is there anybody here that has any comments or would like to uh, weigh in on this? Okay, that's good to know. Um, and uh, I mean, again, for the, primarily for the reason that we approved the site in the first instance for exactly this type of use. We have special permit requirements because there's some uses that aren't just as a matter of right because you're doing some light manufacturing. Shipping. We do have, yeah, we have the reason to come in. But as far as the shipping, you don't even need a loading dock or do you have, I mean? Uh, no, it's ground floor and it opens right up and we'll probably have one pickup from UPS, one from um, gotcha. USPS per day. So I can just come right in the front door. Yeah. You don't need anything special about that. Is there anything else we should be considering? Um, no, I, I think um, in terms of this, like just a, well, in terms of most of these uses that have gone into these things, they're not really customer based, mm -hmm. so they only need a few parking spaces. Right. And I think like you, you would still have a plethora of parking left over. We've got, we've got plenty of parking. And yeah. just calling for three to five at most, and whatever clients. So yeah. I think it's a pretty straightforward use. Anything, Jack? No, I think you're good. It's fine. David, only because we, we had a quorum and uh, we felt like this is something we could wrap our hands around. I'll drop you some stuff for later. In the okay. Year. I mean, if it's okay, we're going to ask you to stand from this vote. Is it okay with him? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, what do you gentlemen want to do? Is that, all right. So unless we have any other further comments or questions, I think we've discussed it enough to the point where we can close the public hearing on it. Mm -hmm. so, Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, so uh, Jack's motion, uh, choice second to close. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 So, okay, with that said, the next step is to say what do we uh, make, a, make a decision on whether we approve this special permit. Uh, is there, are there any conditions that we want to layer on this? Uh, no, this, it, it, it really pretty doesn't. much all the conditions that like, need to be set. Yeah. I mean, we don't, there's no reason hours of operation or not or something we're going to be concerned with, particularly in that site. I mean, he listed, he listed 9 to 5. Yeah, 9 to 5, yeah. 9 to 5. It's an industrial complex. So. Make the motion we accept the special permit. As sounds good to me. Any, uh, second. Second. All right, so Jack's motion, Troy, second. Uh, to approve the special permit application to allow the the use, uh, the light manufacturing use uh, applied for by the applicant. All in favor say aye. 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 So it's a four nothing vote in favor. Okay. Thank you very Congratulations. Much. Good luck there. Thank you. Thanks for welcoming town. Have a good night. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, the next item uh, is also a new continued public hearing. Let's make sure we're on track. Good. We can keep going. Uh, so, pursuant to uh, ZBL section 4.7.3F and 7.8, a hearing for a special permit application submitted. Oh, no, I, that's the one we just did. Oh, no, so, it's, it's like the third paragraph. You no, know, you're right. No, no, I just start, I, I, I got the wrong. Pursuant to ZBL section 7.8 and 8.6, a hearing for a special permit application submitted by Sinorama for JWTC WIC LLC and joint operations applicant on behalf of 264 Newburyport Turnpike LLC property owner for illumin uh, for illuminated outdoor signage at 264-268 Newbury Point Turnpike on the parcel identified as map 13, lot 13 located in the retail zoning district. So uh, who do we have for the applicant today? I think these gentlemen are actually dialing in. Yes. Hi. Sure. Uh, welcome. We're, we're going to make sure we have a good connection here. Okay, can you hear me all right? Well, we're working on it. We, we good? Yeah, I think we can now, I think. Okay. So, good evening. Who, okay. uh, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and let us know what you're, what you're trying to get done? Yes, sir. So, my name is Jeff Newman. I own the Sinorama in Southboro, Massachusetts. And I want to thank you for allowing me to dial in to this remote location. Um, it's a quite a trip to rally. So sure. I appreciate it. And also, uh, on the call, I believe, uh, is Tell White, who represents Joint operations. Tell, are you there? Nobody else is on the call but our engineer. Um, so I don't think they've joined yet. Okay. Wait a minute. All right. Well then. 
There's a third person just popped up. Let's see. No? I guess it's me. <laughs> I'm the third person. Uh, sorry. All right, so let me just continue then. Uh, sure. So we are here uh, seeking a special permit for two eliminated uh, signs that you have in your documentation, your packet. Uh, one is a freestanding LED illuminated sign that is, by the way, identical in size and height as the uh, freestanding sign was there prior to the construction of this property. It was taken down and it was in such poor shape that um, they wanted to build a brand new one, but identical in size and also had been an illuminated sign and also seeking a special permit for an LED illuminated wall sign, which would face the uh, term type, uh, uh, what is it called? I'm sorry. Uh, new report. Uh, new uh, report term type. Excuse me. Uh, now, something to note. So you have all the specs and details of each of these signs, but something to note is that the way these signs are being uh, designed and constructed, the spaces on both the freestanding sign on each side and the wall sign are made out of aluminum and will be routed out so that the letters, only the letters, will illuminate at night. So very little likely will occur. And what that does is it creates a uh, very uh, exquisite looking sign that's very readable. Uh, that only the letters light up. So it's it almost sounds like a neon. I mean, I know it's not neon and nothing like, but I mean, the way it just illuminates the lights, it sounds like a pretty neat effect. Yeah, it does. It's uh, a striking sign. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what and with that said, what, what, what kind of, uh, you know, colors and lighting? I mean, is it going to be very bright or, you know, like very, what, you know, what color are they using? Well, it's, it's white LEDs. Uh-huh. White LEDs, and the only thing that uh, has any color to it is their little green leaf that's uh, inside the O and the J, the joint operation. Gotcha. So it's just white with a little green. Right. Okay. And uh, on the on the uh, freestanding sign, the stripes will also be green. Okay. And on the wall sign, so they're they're really quite the same. And uh, so you asked about the light. The LEDs are you know, pretty common now on their standard uh, brightness. Uh, but because the face is aluminum and only the letters will light up, uh, it, it, it's not something that uh, a driver or, or somebody walking would be blinded by. It, it is a very normal looking lighted sign, but it's against the black background is uh, very easy to read. It's very noticeable. No, and that certainly would, would be one of the concerns if it were, you know, had too much glare so close to the road, but you're saying it really wouldn't create that kind of a no. glare issue. It wouldn't be. And freestanding is up 15 feet, so <coughs> that too helps. Right. Uh, glare. And uh, I, I, well, I suppose because you're here doing the uh, the presentation, uh, we might be able to ask you about hours of, you know, what what hours would they be illuminating the sign? Is it just overnight, I mean, during during uh, evening business hours or overnight? Well, uh, there are actual, the cannabis industry, as I understand it, has rules about when signs can be illuminated, so they're going to follow okay. the rules. I, could, I couldn't tell you what they are, okay, but... Typically, you know, in most towns that we work in, um, the signs are usually lit at least an hour after business the business closes, well, and then and these are both going to be on sign automatic sign timers, so that uh, they'll be set to go on a certain time and off a certain time okay. each day. That's kind of been the standard that with, with these lit signs that we've actually put a condition that actually is more like that. But usually we have it coincide with hours of operation, don't we? Yeah, hours of operation, hours of operation, but, operation. Yeah. but an hour after. But, but we do give them an extra hour after? I, th I, I think, think it's, it's hours of operation. It's hours 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 hours. Yeah, we've never gave them an hour afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so obviously in compliance with the, the CCC, but I think we're more likely to, to limit it to just hours of, of uh, uh, 
It's open for business. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, anybody here uh, from the, the neighborhood or the community would like to comment on it? I mean, the one thing we'll say about uh, th this area, it, it, obviously it's the commercial district. I don't think there's a residential abutter for, well, there, there may be some people not too far, but nothing, it, it is a commercial district. So, you know, this type of signage is, is appropriate there. But it, that district has the new overlay for residential on top, but there's no residential on top yet. Right, right. I, this is a pretty clean looking sign. Yeah. And it's, I mean, obviously, we're not subject matter can't be. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, ten years ago that would have been a big problem, maybe. But I think that's what uh, that's the new world we live in. Well, it says twenty-one plus. It does say twenty-one plus. Yeah. <laughs> you put it right up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, anybody see anything you want to talk about or question about it? Not on the freestanding. No. As far as uh. The height of the freestanding. Do we have any? Uh, the last one was 15 feet. 14 feet. Yeah, it's supposed to be four. This is 14 feet. Okay, and the maximum top elevation? At 15 feet. Okay, gotcha. Um, so uh, you, you, you had mentioned 15 feet as the height, but this actually says on our plan 14.3. And, and I missed the height. Oh, that's okay. No, no problem. Now, the wall, the wall sign, that'll take up how much space of the sign freeze? I'm sorry, repeat that, I couldn't hear. You have, you're, you're also, you're going to have the same type of sign as a wall sign? Yes, it is uh, constructed the same. It's like single size, of course. And, uh, the face is also metal, aluminum, routed out. Yeah. And only the letter and the lines will illuminate at night. So the dimensions are the same as this sign? Uh, it's a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller, okay. It's the A. Uh, just under 39 square feet versus 42 square feet for the uh, freestanding. Okay. And what's the ratio of uh, signage to, to to fascia? Is there any? Don't we have some kind of? Yeah, a, there's like you get the. Um, what's right here? Like, uh, I'm sure you've considered this, uh, but we just want to always make sure. But either way, you have to meet whatever that standard is. Um, that in terms of the the area that's under the. the that's not under this bylaw, the illumination standards, but they, you do have to meet those. Those are those are reviewed by the building inspector. So when he sees this, um, you know he would be if there if there's any issue with it, he would he would let you have something that goes beyond those parameters of. The but I think what he's saying is even after we approve it, there's still it is subject to that dimensional yeah. uh, restriction. Exactly. But I think. You've probably looked at it, and this this doesn't seem like it's overly big, so it'll probably fit within it. But that's on you. Are you you're talking about the wall sign, or yeah, the, the wall sign. Engines of the wall. Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. All right. Well, anyone have anything else they want to comment on this? Chris, I'm going to recuse myself because I was involved in the preliminary design of the building. Oh, okay. And somebody has used that preliminary design as the facade of the building. Okay. It's going to be a legal case. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that still leaves us with a quorum. So um, if we don't have any further comment, I think we've taken in as much as we need to to make a decision on this. So for that reason, I'm going to uh, ask the board to consider closing the public hearing. I'm going to make a motion to do that. Second. All right, so uh, motion and a second on the floor. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. And anybody? Uh, <coughs> I'm going to make a motion to approve the, yeah. uh, the special aye. permit for the signage. Second. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the, uh, the applicant's special permit for the two signs presented, a wall sign and a freestanding illuminated sign. Uh, so I'm going to just put it to the, to the four members that are uh, here. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 So you got four in favor. David's recused. Uh, so I, you, you, Mr. Applicant, we're all set. Uh, the only the only condition that we're going to put on it that perhaps you haven't asked for is that we limit it to the hours of operation. Right. All right. Okay. Very good. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yep. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thanks a lot. Good.
All right, good. we're actually keeping on track here for the most part. Uh, the next item is an appointment for an informal discussion. So it's not a public hearing. We don't need to open anything. No, no votes are going to be taken, but we are going to uh, entertain a presentation by Saxon Partners pertaining to a prospective 40B affordable housing project at 395 Main Street, map 27, lot 532A and 532B in the outlying zoning district. So, uh, evening. How are you doing? Good evening. Dave Calhoun from Saxon. Jack Leffel from Saxon. David and Jack, how are you? Good. Please, yeah, if you don't mind, just because we're just in, in yeah, formal. In formal, yeah. yeah. But nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, if, uh, we'll grab those boards for a second. Yeah. Sorry about this. Uh, it, it is because we're doing these live no, broadcasts. We're with you. Yeah. We're with you. Um, just quickly, uh, we wound up in uh, Rally uh, because um, we were looking for a place to do apartments. We do apartments across the country. Most of our apartments are focused on the healthcare industry and that we build high quality studios and one bedrooms only as close as we possibly can to make the hospitals. But we also do apartments. Retail, commercial, but um, we have uh, a couple large apartment deals here in Massachusetts as well. And I was looking at a piece of property out there towards the highway. Uh, that was not one that came together. And while we're doing that, looking at the market, surveying it, Jack actually found 395 Main Street, the industrial site of Didex, which was not on the market at the time, but had been before. Uh, and they're leaving town, they need a bigger operation, so we approach them and we talk to them. So uh, they would like us to buy their almost 18 acres at a bus train station and the railroad. Uh, and what we would like to do is a friendly 40B. Uh, we would like to do 320 units uh, in a friendly 40B. That immediately gets everybody to sit back in their seat and say, holy smokes. Um, 340. Excuse me? Did you say 340? 320. If you want 340, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, uh, we went to the Board of Selectmen, met with them. Uh, we showed them quickly what we were proposing. And this is strictly a massing study that we did right out of the bar, just to see what we could fit on it. Now, the thing you have to remember we also have to fit on this is a wastewater treatment plant, uh, which we feel confident we can do. This Obviously, get, we'll get all greened up as things go, whether or not a clubhouse is there or it's moved up in is all something that we address during the permitting phase. But it was initially our look at, can we put a building that we want on this property? It would be four stories because we want to capture the views out to the Great Salt Marsh. Uh, we currently show on this plan all the required parking uh, that you would normally require. We feel it's way over park. Uh, we'd like to drop it down to like 1.3 spaces per uh, unit, which would drastically reduce it. Um, and we get the initial response from the board of selectmen was, it's too big, it's way too big. Um, during that process, and I had a brief conversation with the right. chairman, um, one of the things that you mentioned to us very early on is when we go to the board of selectmen, at least get an early traffic study, mm -hmm. uh, and try to create some connectivity between Main Street in the railroad station. So what you can see here that we prepared is we took that same plan and then we put the abutters on it because the first thing that happens at a meeting is people ask, how far away are you from my house? And you very quickly realize that we're, our first apartment building is almost 600 feet from Main Street. Uh, houses, we're close to this one here. We're, what, 286 feet to the clubhouse. Uh, we're 186 feet here to that house. But the distances are unique to the site in that we're a long ways away from anybody. Uh, we're super close to the train station. Uh, but during that process, when you mentioned connectivity, this is where our first shot at mm -hmm. gradient sidewalk that would come all the way up and in so that anybody out here wanting to get dropped off or on a bike or walking could cut through the property, get to the MBTA without having to go up railroad have and creating more congestion up the street. We then uh, had GPI. Uh, do you have packets for the yeah. board? Um, we had GPI quickly run a traffic analysis. Uh, and there's not a lot of traffic data out there. There's, I believe, roughly 
4,000 trips per 24 hour period to go buy on one. Uh, on, on, on 1A? On Main Street. Yeah, okay, got gotcha. um, And if you look in the packet, um, you'll find the GPI report. You actually will find two GPI reports. Um, they're dated, the first one is dated September 27th. Uh, that's sort of the back of this. Uh, nope. We just want to get one. No, you get two. Yeah, the updated one has the red line. Yeah. So you'll see two traffic reports. September 27th, which is the first one we did, we presented to the board of selectmen. Gotcha. Uh, yes. And then we went to October 6th. Because what we did is when we went to the board of selectmen, they said it's too big. And we said, well, what's too big? They didn't want to tell us. They didn't feel comfortable. They said that's really something that we probably should send to the planning board. So I think the, they were talking about the number, because uh, you mentioned about bringing the number down to. We mentioned we'd bring the, be willing to bring the number down, but what was that number? Yeah. We weren't looking. You proposed that second one that would be like 240. What we did is we yeah. took in, yeah. this is on the summary for you guys here at the front. This page here, if you fold this out, what we did when we went back to them the second time, is hate to do it against ourselves, but we, mm -hmm. we said, okay, what can we really do and want to keep the deal and make a really good profit out of it? So really, the walkaway number for Saxon is 240 to 260 units. The other thing that comes into play there is at the 240, 260, is it would put Rollins strongly over at 10%. So you wouldn't have to deal with guys trying to put eight units on a one acre lot to make two of them affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't have to deal with the subdivisions where people are trying to change the subdivision rules and regs and doing a 40 days. So that was the number of that we went back to 240, 260, and we dropped in a couple of notes about the parking, what it did, it did to the parking, what it did to the number of cars out there. And then we got on the phone and we said to GPI, we'd like you to rerun the report and just redline it. Put the new date on it, put the new numbers in it so people can read it in one quick read and they can see what happens with the traffic. And the traffic goes down. Uh, did we eliminate the traffic? No. But at the end of the day, the traffic volumes, uh, in GPI's opinion, are not going to create any intersections that would have service levels that are greatly changed to the right now. We're focused on people that want to live here and ride the train in Boston. Um, you know, we, uh, we have had different parts of town study for different reasons the traffic in different you know over the last few years and uh, I think the most relevant one is something that they did out on route 1 and 133 not too long ago and that because I, I don't know how this stuff gets collected I don't know if it's available but they basically said you really don't have a huge traffic problem in rally presently mm -hmm. you know uh, so as a result you know we're not on any showing up on anybody's radar as someplace that needs to do but anecdotally, I think everybody in town will tell you that rush hour has, in the last few years, become a lot different than it was previously. I think a lot of people think it, it's probably rightly so. EBSCO in, in Ipswich is their largest employer, and really 133 is probably the fastest way to get in there off of 95 from most other approaches. So a lot of it's that, but it is people going all the way down to 1A, going all the way out to 95. And we feel like, you know, I mean, I think that it's not a crazy assumption to think that this is going to certainly add to that traffic, uh, you know. But again, it's not it's not all it's not all that bad already, and it's anecdotally a problem. But it, it alleviates in twenty or thirty minutes every morning. And it never takes more than it may add five or eight minutes to any mail, you know trip across town, but never a whole lot more than that. But it does have an impact, and I do think you know the traffic studies will say it doesn't. Anecdotally, everybody will say it's real. Yeah, I mean, I sat at the light a couple times. Yeah. I sat there again tonight, um, you know, one out of one. Right. Uh, and the thing that I find is most confusion, confusing is the blinking yellow to go left. Yeah, right. That everybody kind of, what does that mean? I don't remember my driver's ed class. And that's the, I get to go. That's new. And, and that's new. They just did that. They just did that. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it's almost like they need to reset the timing to reflect what's out there now. Yeah. Um, you know, as you know, 40B is, is not responsible for fixing the existing traffic or the future traffic. Right. Um, the other thing that we felt uh, would be a pretty powerful thing to, to gain is 
people need to get to that T station. That T station is a tremendous asset in the eyes of the state, in the eyes of the people of Raleigh, people of Newburyport, everybody up and down that line. Uh, and if the train isn't successful and people aren't using it, eventually you lose stations. Will they take out the rail line? Will they close the station out? I don't think they will ever do that. But on the other hand, it sure works a lot better when they've got riders. Mm -hmm. um, we think this project would bring strong ridership. It would bring a lot of young people out of the city that currently are coming out of the city and hanging out in their parents' houses uh, because they can't buy a place out here. Uh, and they would be able to ride back and forth. They don't even typically have cars. Uh, my personal attorney I know just sold his house in Hingham. A couple came to buy his house, young couple, 29 years old. They bought a house for a million six. They had never bought a house before in their life. They never owned a car in their life. And they moved into Hingham uh, because of the train. Mm -hmm. They didn't know the train was still a mile away, but they're going to jump on their bikes and go. So I think you're going to find a lot of people who will come to Raleigh, rent, find that they like it. As they save up enough money, they'll be able to buy a house that will also give an option for a lot of people that are aging in place right now in town. Because you have a lot of people in town, and I shared a document with the Board of Selectmen from the town of Weston. You have a lot of people in town, surprisingly, it would be eligible to live in this, and not only would they be able to live in the market rate units, but they would be eligible to be affordable. Can I ask you about that? Uh, because that's something that we do have a little confusion on. We don't really have a 40B expert uh, here, uh, you know, on the town level. And, you know, I think initially we heard you say that every unit will count towards our affordability. What's, so, and is that in fact the case, no matter what, I mean, it, 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 the difference is, if you have a 40B and it comes to town, and it's a rental product, the way the state, state program is set up, if it's a rental product, and it's 300 units, you get credit for all 300. If it's a for sale product, and 20% of those are affordable, or 10%, I believe it's probably, to, I think it's 20% for a uh, for sale product. So if you have 300 units, and it's condos, you only get credit for 60 units. You still get the whole 300 unit deal. Right. But you only get credit for the actual for sale. Sure. Okay. Units. So those designated affordables. So you're saying we get credit for all these, but we're still going to designate affordables within it? Yes. You designate 25% of the units within this would be affordable. But people say, oh, okay, affordable. The, I mean, the, right. We, we moderate income uh, guidelines. Right. And, but what people instantly think about is government housing. Right. Section 8 housing. Uh, it, it's got the wrong label. It's affordable, but it's not really affordable. It's just kind of reasonable. Right. Because the rents fall into uh, a formula that's based on 80% of the area median income, <coughs> which is not the area median income for Raleigh. It's the area median income for the great air, greater Boston area. So the, a person can fall into the income <coughs> And still make, I think it's uh, it maybe five. It's like ninety thousand dollars for a household of two. Ninety thousand yeah. for a household of two. Yeah. Um, and we provided um, rents from our Plymouth deal to the board of selectmen, uh, and the rents aren't cheap, mm -hmm. uh, even the affordable. Um, but what you find is, and if you look at the Weston article, there's a lot of similarities with Rowley and Weston. You have a, <laughs> that, if you take out the uh, $1.6 million average uh, house price, maybe. Yeah, but, but if you look, <laughs> over half, 52% of those over 65 in, in Weston earn $74,000 or less per year. And then if you look at some of the other numbers, 21% of them have disabilities. But the number of people that are eligible for affordable housing is shocking because so many people over 65 do not have income that's recognized under the formula. So you could be gotcha. You could be asset rich. You could have 401k well, money that you know you just look at your minimum draw. And, and and it kicks in. So this this piece I supplied to you was and I included in it 
Eighty percent of the area median income. If you look on the page behind it, you know, I somehow like a lost track. So good, gotcha. And you'll see the numbers. So, in in I think you were the gentleman who asked, is there a difference between where people live? Absolutely no difference. Mm -hmm. You can't tell a market rate from an affordable unit. You can't. You just you don't know. There is no difference. You have no idea if the guy next to you is some hedge fund guy from Boston or some guy who owns a hedge clipping company and lives there. It doesn't matter. There's no differential. Uh, but it, it's not when, you know, you can say, you know, may not have the median income of, of Weston, but got the same problems. Mm -hmm. Older people, nice homes, they can sell right now and make a score and a half, but the downsides are going to spend all that money buying something else. They want to stay in town. There's no rental product. So that's where we think we really fill a niche. Um, Jack uh, pulled some information to you just on the ridership. I don't know if you have any questions on that. Uh, some of the legislation that the state is pushing. Well, you know what? I think we do want to know uh, the, the ride, how this would necessarily increase. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought this. I didn't see it before, but but. It says the state is encouraging 40 Bs close to, to MBTA. What 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 kind of initiatives is the state taking to, to try to encourage this? So it's a little bit separate from the 40 B. It's more of a transit-oriented development. Mm -hmm. But it's worth flagging that this would also be qualifying for that because basically what they're seeing is across the state, as soon as you get out of like the downtown bubble and those towns and stuff, mm -hmm. the commuter rails kind of land in sparse areas. So mm -hmm. what they're trying to do and what they see in places where there's apartments right next to it, it instantly increases the ridership mm -hmm. and brings those people out to the suburbs, which is kind of their ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. So they have tons of incentives and things like that for increasing mm -hmm. um, the neighborhood essentially when it comes in. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. On one hand, I think it's for housing, but it's really to get people on the MBTA to justify what they're doing. Well, exactly. Yeah. 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 The, the, the thing that also comes into play is a lot of people when they hear, you know, you're trying to do you know, 320 units on 17 acres. That's less, less than 17 units per acre. That's not dense development. The state would like to see you do 20, 40, 50, 60, 80 units per acre when you're this close to a train station. Um, ironically, yes, I have my own deal in Weston that I'm permitting. It's a hostile 40B. I'm 75 units on two, 75 units per acre, but I'm right up against 128. Mm -hmm. uh, not a single person opposed it, but it was denied by uh, the ZBA, so we're in the permitting process still, the appeal process. But what you'll find, people always raise and say, oh, well, this isn't smart growth. Well, it, it's exactly the opposite. It truly is the smartest growth. Because think about it, if you guys had to reach your affordable requirement and you just had to build 150 affordable homes, how are you ever going to get to that number? Because Nobody wants to build or can build affordable homes without having some type of subsidy for density. And so you, if you're building a single family home, you have acre plus zoning here, I believe. And what's your frontage requirement? Is it 125? 125. 150. 150. 150. So you're big lots. Uh, so just to build 10 homes, and if you build them on either side of the street, you got 900 feet of of new road that has to be built, that has to be maintained, water lines, uh, it's all private sewer out here. Um, so it's, you're eating up massive amounts of property. So aren't you, but so aren't you, with all the parking. That's why we, we wanted to reduce the parking. Well, there's still an awful lot of parking. There's just too many units here. But when you, when you, when you say parking, I mean... That's all impervious. But well, what we could do is, and, and we mentioned it to the Board of Selectmen, we would like to reduce the parking to 1.3. What, what is that that's on there? That they're that's our requirement, which I believe is 2.1. That's 2.1. So you'd see this parking almost get cut in half, at least a strong third. So we would kill all this, all this, <clears throat> as much of this as we can, probably leave this by the MBTA. You might want to but, buffer against the, the train yeah, tracks. Right. Well, not really. You don't want to buff, You want to put parking right up against the train. Right. Nobody cares no. if that cow looks at the train going by. No, yeah, you but you've got the people Davis. across, across yeah, the way. One concern is we do have Oyster yeah, Shell Road is on the other side of the railroad track, and that there's a neighborhood down there that 
that does, you know, yeah. certainly, you know. But we're not going within a thousand feet of those guys. No, I am much closer than that. They're on the other side of the railroad track, directly opposite it. So Oyster Point is going to be over here. Right. Right. You're right here, aren't you? Don't you live right over well, here? Well, that's David. I live but, down but there. Down here, oh, yeah. these folks. These folks, and they're all in wells, so they're worried about the wa water quality. Did, but their water quality, I mean, if they were worried about their water quality, they should worry about this train that's running up and down here and the residue from the diesel train. I mean, love it changed to electric, but. But where, our wastewater treatment system that we would be required to put in here is reviewed and approved by DEP. It typically takes nine months to get it approved. Uh, the system itself, we pursue what they call reuse quality system so that we would be able to reuse our water for like irrigation so we have water usage that's much lower. The technology has gotten to the point where it's, it's drinkable water in, in a lot of parts of the world. But uh, you can't do it here because marking. But we would probably want to use it in the toilets, which it would be allowed here. So we'd be able to drop our water consumption down by almost 48, maybe 50 percent, which is a big help. Um, Does that, are you using that anyway? Have you used it on any projects? Uh, wastewater treatment plants? No, but to reuse the water, like you talked about. Stadium is on it. Okay. I, mean, I think they actually have labels on the urinals. Oh, is that right? I, it's reused it. I was only in there for my vaccine. I didn't get to go in. <laughs> but I do know they're on it. Okay. Uh, because they got through the approval process like that. They own the town. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it's a different animal. But what about, uh, I mean, that, it, you know, I, I knew that we, we wouldn't be dealing with it. Uh, 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 on-site septic system, you know, uh, so you'd be doing this some kind of a uh, packet uh, treatment, treatment plant. plant. How about stormwater? Stormwater all has to be treated, and the stormwater has to leave the property treated to a standard that is far better than what exists there now. You've got an industrial site mm -hmm. with no treatments. It just runs wherever it goes. I mean, so we would have to go through a whole stormwater system, which would retain, treat, and then it has to release the water. It can release a greater volume off our site, but it can't release it at a greater rate. So it has to be controlled to the point that it comes off your property slower than it does right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would have to go through an extensive wastewater, uh, excuse me, stormwater treatment system, design, PE stamp, it has to go through DEP uh, to make sure that we can protect not only the abutters, but the salt marsh. Um, we would also, in that program, we'd look at recharging because what they want you to do is take your roof leaders, treat that, mm -hmm. recharge that into the groundwater, to include the groundwater. So there's all kinds of things that DEP now promotes that you can do when you have a big project. Uh, whereas if you did a subdivision, what you would have there is you would probably have 18 homes all on septic systems, and anybody can put whatever they want in their septic system. There's no controls. It doesn't matter what the plumbing inspector says. But uh, So having just one septic system is worse than a private wastewater treatment plant approved by DEP. I have a couple questions. Um, do you know what kind of impact this will have on the power grid or anything like that? Um, the power grid is... We would probably propose this as an all-electric building with the roof ready for solar. Uh, we may not put solar on, but we'd make it roof ready. Uh, so if the tax credits and the energy levels are at the point that it uh, makes sense to do that. Uh, but the power loads are not that great. We would, I'm 90% sure we would not put this on natural gas. You don't have natural gas. Right now, uh, you there's city street. gas in probably, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure if it's in there one street. Yeah. We Gas is quickly gone off. Everybody right now is going to the super high efficient electric units, Mitsubishi split units, yeah. mini splits. Uh, eliminates duct work, it eliminates a lot of things. You do something like that in an apartment? In an yeah. The mini splits now are yeah, so efficient. Splits, yeah. and, and they all have sensors in it. So if, they, if you put a mini split in this room right here, those sensors are reading out, and they can tell in that corner that that corner is at 73, is that, right? that one's at 78, and it redirects so that you get a constant temperature across it. You can't hear them. Mm -hmm. um, they're incredible. Yeah. And the cost of putting a mini split in an apartment, 
is about 75 cents on the dollar of a regular conventional heat pump system. And you don't have any of the usual problems you have. And if there is a problem, that cassette comes off. Mm -hmm. They pop a new cassette on so you don't have someone in your apartment up on the wall. Right, right, right. All of it sounds like an advance. The, yeah. the, you know, we'd we'll be looking at uh, super energy efficient hot water heaters, maybe even go to insta hot hot water heaters. But uh, we don't have a, a load calculation yet for electricity. But the um, the other thing is, you know, you've talked a little bit about some of the green initiatives. Would you be um, considering uh, electric um, charging spaces and things like that too? Is that right, right now, what are we putting in our average six? Six and then have it ready to add more when the market catches up to that. Okay. So you'd put in at least a half dozen, and then what you do is run conduit for. Now the 20, because hopefully eventually everything catches up to it. But uh, yeah, the charging stations are a hot issue. The other thing we'd have on the property would be things like we would have a, a private dog wash area. So the do dogs get washed inside and maintain a private dog walk park. So that they can, their dogs aren't running through the neighborhood, they have their own park. Now they want to have a little refreshment center at the park as well. Most of them in other states allow you to have a bar. I don't know if Raleigh would allow us to have a bar. But it is. That might be a trick, but as long as the, so the ordinances the, are a little bit. the dogs? No, it's actually for the, uh, the residents. What they like to do is they like to sit there, have a cold drink, talk about their dogs, watch the dogs. Uh, we'd also have a bike barn probably on the property. That's the new latest and greatest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so people can go in and work on their bikes, their skis, whatever. But maybe as a clubhouse you might be able to get away with something like that. We have a clubhouse as well. I'm just thinking as a club as compared to a commercial uh, entity open the bar. For, yeah, yeah, so yeah, the bar. charging. Yeah, right. Something, like, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So is the bar approved? But <laughs> but, right. We can, we can do the bar. Uh, as far as the 300 units, we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> how, how large are the apartments? Excuse me? How large are the apartments? Um, I think they're going to average probably between uh, a one bedroom slash studio uh, will probably be like 576 square feet, and then they're going to range up to about over 1,100 maybe. The three bedrooms would be like 1250. How many three uh, bedrooms? Uh, only 10% of the affordable units which are required by the state. It's not our choice. We would prefer to stay with ones, studios, and uh, twos. So 10% of the affordables, and you're going to say you might have to have up to 60 affordables? Is that what we would have to have, if we were doing 320, yeah. it would be 80 affordables. 80 affordable, okay. And of that, it'd be a certain So 25% percent of, is is it, it's 25 percent affordables? Yes. Okay. Whether it's 320 or 25% of the number. But no matter what the number is, all of them count. As, as rentals, they all count. And again, I'm not asking you to tell me, teach me the 40 below, but let's just say I was going to build a four family house on a, on a half acre lot under 40B. If I called them all rentals, they would all count towards the affordable, even as a four family, as if, opposed to if, a. If you came in and you said, okay, I want to, I've got a half acre lot that's downtown, uh, and I want to do 10 units. As rentals. As rentals. And you did 25% of those affordable, and you had the proper number of ones, twos, and threes in the mix. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I, I just... Uh, but if it's for sale... I would think that people would be exploiting that all over the place. There's, there's a lot of guys that have been doing the subdivision game, uh -huh. uh, and more and more doing it, uh, because uh, uh, several towns tried to get proactive, and they said, okay, we're going to do our own affordable program. Every time that you, a developer, comes in for a subdivision, we're going to require them to do 10% of them affordable, or they can build it someplace else. Right. We have something like that in town. Yeah. Uh, so that's going on. Um, but the, the affordable program, and the big thing that we talk to the Board of Selectmen about is whether you approve 320 units or you approve none, you're going to have developers coming in. Uh, the retirement home that uh, is probably going to be coming on the market, somebody will come in and try to do that. The big parcel's out by 95. Uh, one of them's under agreement. Somebody's going to do a large subdivision there. Uh, then there's 127 acres as you come further in. Somebody's going to do something there. Uh, so, you know, you're going to get more homes. You're going to get more 40Bs. And the thing is, if you don't approve one big 40 B, it gets you to the full 10%. Until you get that number, they can keep coming. 
Um, and you mean we can keep going? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not we're not going to come no. and try to do a small project. We, that's not our business model. Yeah. Uh, we're not looking to do condos. That's where you. I think I think Raleigh is going to see more 40 Bs that are going to be condos, uh, and that's where you're just going to. Somebody's going to come in, they're going to submit for 160 units, and they'll either come friendly or hostile, they'll get approved. And you could do a lot less units, up the price for the rentals, make it a nicer proposal, fit it into the town, and still make money. What are you thinking? At, at 240, 260 units? Not 250, like 50 or 60 units. They, they, nobody, make it more village-like. You can't. One make, of the issues that 40 B in the design review process is it should fit the neighborhood. In a four-story building like this, it looks like it came right out of Malvern. There is That's, nothing. There's nothing we proposed yet. I know, but you, I mean, we haven't somebody, provided any elevation. Somebody drew it. Nobody's drawn it yet. Somebody drew that. There's, it. there's no elevations. No I know. Elevations. I know. But you're seeing where I'm coming from. That what, what, you're, what you're saying is you'd like somebody to come in and take an industrial site that's not... Not industrial site. Commercial. Not a commercial site. Grandfathered commercial industrial no. site. It's in a residential neighborhood. But it's grandfathered. Yeah, I mean, it is curious what they have going on there. Two and a half acres are zoned commercial with a covenant, a restrictive covenant on the balance. So it's yep. not all commercial. It's in the outlying district with a special permit to operate the commercial. And, 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 you know, I, I nonetheless, I, I see why this is a project that you can, you know, this property might, might work for this project, you know, it, especially as soon as we lift the restriction that, you know, once, once the Didex building is gone, then that restriction gets lifted. Yeah. Right. But they, to, to your point about design and what you want it to look like and you want it to fit it into the town, that's something that we would do during the process. I mean, we have to get, you know, if it's a friendly 40B, that's something where you work cooperatively. If it's a hostile 40B, it's, I understand that. it's, 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 here's my box, here's what it looks like, here's what Except I'm going to do. Except that you, you as a company haven't done boxes. You've done very fine, good quality, mm -hmm. architecturally designed buildings. Thank you. Yes. I looked you up, and I, I, that's my job to do. And by drawing these rectangles like this is not helping the image, let's put it that way. Well, let, let me, let me, I brought something because I knew you were. You knew I was going to be here. You, you, I knew you were going to I knew you were going to ask a tough question, but those are just footprints. That's just for a man. I understand it. I just wouldn't do it that way, and I do a lot of wood here. Here's the building. You'd say this doesn't fit into the neighborhood. Right. This is very contemporary, very modern. The exact same footprint, okay? Yeah. Exact same number of units. In the middle stop. You that get, fits you in. You get in some place if you drop but, the number of units, yeah. But but you say you say drop the number of units. Number one, it doesn't become a profitable deal. I mean we have to put a wastewater treatment plant in. It's gonna probably going to cost $3 million. Yep. You've got a land company? acquisition. What's your land acquisition? $3.8 million. Okay. We've got to get it permitted, which is probably through the permitting process. It's going to cost us about 600000 to get it permitted. Okay? So if, if you want to guarantee us a profit, I'll do whatever you want. But until you want to sign a guarantee, you've got to give me a profit. I can, I can, I can see a profit. But, but it's not. I mean, this, so, what so this is meant to show you is to address your question about elevations. Elevations change during the process, and that's where we would rather work with the planning board. Maybe they create some micro team that works with maybe a member of the board of selection. Then obviously we go to the ZBA, which is supposed to sit as just a jury, mm -hmm. uh, and they're just supposed to make a decision up or down. Um, if 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 you can some, somehow, and I think your architect can do that, work with the variation of height, which would make it more village-like on your side. So I like the idea of the mill building. Still don't like the numbers, but 
But well, we, we actually we're right. actually researching your history right now because there's not a lot of mill buildings. The closest thing you have to mill buildings is well, we uh, shoe, shoe. you have Lowell Bolt Building Company, yeah. but that's technically it's not in Raleigh anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's the type you if you go to the Lowell Bolt Building Company and you look at that, it looks like the side of an old barn with a whole bunch of windows and their low building, and you can see the exposed foundation with the old stones. Get the Acadia series book on Raleigh. There's a couple things yep. in there. Um, but I'm but giving we, away trade secrets here. But but we we could we could get to a look that we think you guys would be okay with. You're never going to get to a, a look that every single person is going to say, "I love it." Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that we can do is a lot like what you did with the market basket. Probably a lot of people don't love the look of a market basket. That market basket building is 1,200 feet from the street, maybe. You have that great entryway. You don't even see it unless you're going to the grocery store. I mean, that's where, ready, ready for a hmm? update. That's ready for a renovation. <laughs> you ain't kidding. But, but, but as you point me, though, that it's not, it, it doesn't detract from the streetscape because yeah. it's not on the street. And your, your sense of village is a lot what these designs, and as they go along, and if you look at our website, uh, we oh, yeah. look at the one in Plymouth we just did, that 320 became four different buildings. The buildings are centered around, you look at the amenities in the green space that we create. That, that all comes from, can we get parking space relief? Because everybody's got these 2.1 spaces, crazy stuff. You go to Boston right now, they want you to have 0.3. Uh, it doesn't make any sense because then the neighbors like no, some cars. Beverly, Beverly near the railroad station on Grand Tool Street, where they've done a lot of work. They've done one point five, and we made the market we think say, about one point five. But them. the other thing is, we just we're under construction with sort of over fifty five right next to the Pancake House, and that's got a lot of action happening in it in the village style. Admittedly, it's only. And on the high side, it's three stories. Yeah, it meets the high story. Height limitation. We have a height limitation of 35 feet on the front. So it does work well. Well, we would probably look to stay with a four-story building. Whether or not some of them would become three-story um, would all be something that we develop during the design process. Because obviously, we probably want to, unfortunately, have taller buildings towards back towards Main Street so you see over the ones in front of you because it's the views that we're chasing. Right. You know, nobody wants to look at the, the railroad, everybody wants to look across it off to the market. We right. uh, want to get some good landscaping with the railroad to, that cuts down on the noise. Noise, particularly low landscaping. I mean my building I've got under construction right now, we're doing very hard side on that and I'm gonna be landscaping the heck out of it to get the Wheel noise. Yeah, I mean, the, what we would be doing is we'd be going with the triple glazed window. You've uh, got a drop off of close to 20, 25 feet front. From the site goes up, hits a knoll, and then it drops off to the railroad tracks. Yeah. And of course, your preliminary sketch, which I don't like, doesn't respect that at all. Now, the other part of things that should be considered is giving, is if, with the parking relief, giving as much green space and weaving the green space into the building so that that, again, cuts down the noise. I'm not sure you're going to get much of a, yeah, you might get a good marsh view, but it's a limited number of units that will have a good marsh view. We think if, if we lay it out right and play around with it, we're going to have marsh views. These guys, obviously, these guys, it's going to be a little bit restricted. These guys, that way, that way, that way. Uh, people, obviously, on the front side, not so much. Right. Don't, don't even use that scheme <coughs> to show me that stuff. It's going to be different. I know it is. Because no, it, it definitely, it's definitely going to change. I mean, we're going to move the buildings around. 260 units makes an easier project yeah, to sure. get creative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we would like to really try to take the parking down as low as we can. And uh, if you were at the Board of Selectmen, we talked to them about banking our parking. And what we do is, if your parking requirement, we can't agree on it, but we still want to go with more green, then you feel comfortable. We take all the excess spaces that we don't think we need. 
we create them, we then saw it over them. Right. So at least the sub base is there that if, if the parking is needed, we pull it up, we put down some asphalt, put in some curb stops, and we can accomplish the parking. But we really, you know, we want more green space. Uh, we don't want asphalt. It's the worst thing in the world to maintain other than the saw one. I mean, with the proximity of the MBTA, I think, yeah, you know, it makes sense. The architecture was bigger than the MBTA spaces in the scheme. Yeah, our spaces are bigger than the MBTA because yeah, your so requirements are bigger than the MBTA. You, we we all we usually no, ask. I think you're out of scale. We usually ask for them to come down. We usually ask for thinner space. <coughs> so uh, we even ask for some tandem spaces sometimes, and people I, look at us like you're crazy. Well, that's where a couple lives, and they got to get take turns. You know, so. so there's two thoughts that I. I mean, the truth is. You know, the, what you present does have a lot of benefit to the town, and I can mm -hmm. see why we would, could potentially, you know, benefit, and the town really needs to give a very serious consideration to this, and we are. The one thing that jumped out at me, though, was something you said, and, and I did my own back of the, you know, uh, matchbook calculations, and it's a little disappointing, to tell you the truth, in that, you know, let's just say we did do three. 300 units, okay? And let's just say the assessor said that each unit is worth $100,000. Well, that gives us a $30 million valuation there, okay? And I'm not even sure if that's the right number. But if we did have a $30 million valuation, we'd be getting about $700,000 worth of tax revenue, mm -hmm. which is, for the impact, and I'll tell you why I say that, it's not, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a loser, because all we need is 45 school children and we will have 45 school children, most likely, because it seems like every three bedroom is going to have school children. Uh, and there's going to be at least, you know, so many. So with 45 school children, this is going to be a net revenue draw. Uh, this is going to be a loser for the town in terms of its impact on, on its finances. What's your tax rate, residential tax 15. rate? 15.65. Per thousand. Per thousand. For residential. Right. That's only single rate. So, so if this... The taxes on this would be probably pushing, you know, a million bucks a year. I mean, I, I did the numbers. I got. I don't know what to. I, I, I came up with a hundred thousand per unit valuation because I didn't know what else to go with. But I mean, you know, I think it's not crazy. And if it's lower, then it's less. And if it's, you know, but I came up with uh, four fifty. Uh, what's this? What, 450, what do you mean? I'm sorry. Yeah, I think uh, our rough estimate, I think I told the Board of Selectmen, is somewhere between 700 and 900,000. That's right. strictly back of the envelope. Right, but, but, but our per pupil cost is over $15,000. So but just the number of students is going to really right away take even right, any gains we get. But right now, do we bring the. Uh, your, your school study shows that you need kids. You've been declining since. 2009, is it? Oh, well, we need kids we have, to... We have the capacity, but if it's costing us more money to... Well, well, it costs you more money every year, from what I understand, even though the enrollment goes down. That's what one yeah. gentleman said to me. It doesn't matter what the enrollment is, yeah, it goes up. You know, well, I mean, people have realized in this development, that you're influencing, you're going to be 10 percent, almost 10 percent of the, the number of people in this town are coming into this development. 8% someplace around. Mm -hmm. We have a great voting block. One guy said they're all Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> but no, some, some people raise that, that question when you, when you move into, you do a large development, they're like, oh, you can change the zoning, you can do whatever you want because you've got to tell all your residents to show up and, and vote a certain way. The reality is it doesn't really happen. It doesn't, that doesn't happen. As far as the kids from the school, there's there's a program that the state has. Uh, I forget what they call call it, but you can apply for it. And basically, it's a guarantee from the state that the net revenues from a 40B, if it exceeds, uh, you know, um, the costs, if their net revenues are not clean positive versus the impacts, then the state will give you a check. The state has never written a check mm -hmm. in the history of the 40B process. And well, the, that and, doesn't, and, 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 that doesn't and, necessarily so tell me that it's a and, and the other thing, 60s. And the other thing is, you really do need kids in the school. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need a younger generation coming to this town. 
uh, because right now everybody is is aging in place, and right now. I mean, I'm not. You're right. I mean, we want to encourage families. We want to encourage growth, but we also want to, you know, we have uh, a town to manage. And, and one thing that everyone in this town, you look at surrounding communities, our tax rate is very high. Our water costs, add that to it, makes it even more expensive to live here. Uh, and to say that, hey, we're getting 300 new households, but the good news is our taxes will go up. Not necessarily. But it shouldn't exactly. even be a not necessarily. If well, 300 exactly. houses come to town, it should be, guess what? This will have a benefit of bringing down, you know, it will help share the costs. And, and as a result, the cost of, of sending our kids to school goes down. And, and, and this seems like it's not, I mean, so that's my, you know, to, that's where I if you were to have my, cons I mean, it's, it's got to be the biggest concern. Taxpayers are concerned about how much it's going to cost. Put it this way, if your tax calculation is correct, you get a million dollars in tax revenues. You, if you have 300 cars there, just your excise tax alone on 300 cars, average car is worth, what, 20 grand right now? Mm -hmm. 25 bucks per thousand, well, that's, a, that's 500 bucks per car, that's 150 G. Right. On so, I mean, top of that, with no kids, no nothing, but the, the reality of it is, if you look at all the studies, and there's studies upon studies, the kids, do not come to this type of property. The kids do not typically, and the parents, it's short term. It's kids that, newborns, mm -hmm. that are in these properties until the parents can find a house in town that they like, that they can't afford, and then they roll into a property where they, they come here and with the rental market, they can test it out. They can see if they like it. They can see if the schools are good, if, they're, if they like the neighborhood. They don't have to make a million dollar investment to come here. They can rent. I mean, Jack's a classic example. I mean, you don't have kids. No, no. no. Renting. Renting. Uh, the thing is, and it's anecdotal, but we, we do have a district that has a lot of rentals that part of our school system, the Triton school system. And, and as a result, you get a lot of transient students, students that are only in the school district for a limited number of years. And I think that when you get somebody that you didn't teach, you know, K through 8, and you got to teach them 9 and 10, you don't always get the same result as the kids you've had all along. And, and those transient students cost more, there's a higher impact on the special education, potentially on you know, different, uh, you know, different demographics, create different issues, and it, it also could potentially have a negative impact on the overall ratings of the schools because transient students don't do as well as students that are in place all along. So I mean, the, the, what I'm really saying is my biggest concern and things like you know, ask you as a developer to try to mitigate for us is, you know, <clears throat> you know, if you could, if there was a way you could say, we know you're not going to have these students, number one, that's not going to be, you know, or number two, we're going to make sure that this project is going to be a net positive for the town's, you know, uh, tax basis. I know that you we, said that's not a 40B developer's obligation, it's but... Not, it's not their obligation. Uh, I mean, we're not even responsible for any of the existing impacts. I mean, right. if it's a hostile 40B, they don't even come to the planning board. They don't see the planning board. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't go to any of the other boards. They make one application, they submit it to the ZBA. Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah, they go to the Board of Appeals and that's it. If it's turned down, go to the state. It's still five years, six years. But it's, it's, it's five years if you're uh, in a town that has a million dollars to spend on litigation and you got a developer who can spend two million. You get, you get the state power. But if you get most towns, uh, a 40B resolution is usually resolved within 18 months. Uh, and they, But they, as far as the kids, I mean, you're saying there could be 45 kids here. I think the math would, in the study... Well, no, I just said if there were 45 kids, yeah. it would likely offset the revenue gain. But if there's probably going to be a fraction of that. I mean, um, number one, you know, if someone's going to a town and they're renting strictly for the school system, they go to Lexington. Yeah. Oh. They go to the number one school. They go to Lexington. They're not. They're going to Avalon's property in Lexington. They're going they're to not, Andover. They're going to. Yeah. They're not going to Weston because we had to have that talk with Weston when the school committee came in and, and, and ripped into us that you know, oh, you're going to bring kids to our school. We have the finest school in the country. Well, you're not number one. You're not number two. You're not number three. You're not number four. So those players are all taking their kids, and they're going to other. 
I understand your point about transients. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a lot of time tied to the town. But you're going to get that anywhere. Uh, and as far as uh, kids coming to school, you get a 10-unit subdivision, you're going to have a higher likelihood of getting 30 kids right out of that one subdivision. And think about it. If you have a subdivision and you have 30 kids at that sub come to town through new homes being built, how many buses you got to put on to pick up those kids? You get 30 kids here, you get 45 kids here, you get 50 kids here. One new bus. One, not even a new bus. The bus that goes down the, the main drag. 45 is one new bus. But I mean, your number, it's half of us. No, okay. They stop in and they pick them up. Uh, and it's one stop, easy for the buses. Um, but, you know, in the, subdiv the subdivisions that we have been working with, the cost of the houses are up there so that it evens out pretty good, I think. But, uh, Chris? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's not, you're not getting five, four or five kids out of a house anymore. No, I mean, but you certainly get, and new subdivisions do generate students. Yeah. And, you know, and, and yet that's where you get growth, so, in the future. And every, <coughs> single, and every single one of those houses has a private septic system. But every one of those houses, I mean, you only need about, 100 of those, well, 75 of those houses to generate the same kind of revenue as these 300 units might from a tax revenue perspective. So, uh, I'm looking at it from a whole different point of view. If you upgrade the quality of your buildings and the atmosphere being next to the train and make this place special because it's the only one like it north of Boston, then you've got something and you're going to charge more money for it. We, we, we're already projecting that we, we can charge, because if you look at the rent comps in Raleigh, it doesn't justify doing the deal at all. If you pull the Raleigh rent... But there's no rentals in Raleigh, really. Well, there's... Yeah. There's one apartment, yeah, a couple of apartment buildings. And, and then there's condos next to it. I mean, right. there's very limited right. market data. You have to go up to Newburyport. Right. Yeah. And if you go up to Newburyport, um, the deal up there is, is getting great rents. What's that hitting? So there's an apartment... The one that we're talking about right next to the train station. Right. There's, you know, it's based off income, but it was about 2000 for a one bedroom. So that's all relative. Uh -huh. Yeah, by town. I don't know, it's a new green, the, the green development right near the railroad station up there, the one and a half story buildings. The name of it is the Newburyport Crossing. Yeah, this, it's like it's a, a four or five story building. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's owned by a company out of Andover, I think. Um, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, but there is a point at which what people do is they, it's the check writing ability. And at a certain yeah. point, if you try to get, you know, seaport rents here, yeah, you can see the water. Yeah, you got a great train. Yeah, you get some yeah. cool restaurants downtown. But it's not the seaport. You're not going to get five dollars square foot rent. Yeah, but you didn't have to pay what you what they had to pay for land in the seaport. Yeah, but the taxes might even be lower in Boston than what you guys charge. Right. I mean, 15 bucks per thousand. I know. Well, that's what, believe me, that's why I'm you know, saying that the people in town are already crying uncle. And to but it's not only the tax rate, but it's the assessment. Right. Mm -hmm. And the assessment may be lower. Right. But, it, but if, this is, if this brings in, you know, $900,000 a million dollars in revenues a year, and you get 10 kids, you're ahead. Yeah. You're way ahead. You get no kids, and we're designing to not bring the kids. That's why we want to do four stories. That's why we want to have elevators, because kids are not, you don't want to have a key, your kid and say, okay, take your bike down the hall and what, get in the elevator. What about some properties around it that may go down in valuation? I don't think they'll go down in value. The no. biggest detriment to the property values right now in that neighborhood is the unknown yeah, of what's going to happen yeah, with the manufacturing. The Malden scheme will knock the value down. The warehouse I, scheme may not. No. I, I don't think if this gets built in the quality that which we build it, and if you support 260 units, I think we're going to be able to make, I mean, we're going to make it look really neat. We're going to make it inviting. We're going to be able to create a lot of green space. Um, but if we only do 260, you're not going to get the revenues that the chair wants. So we got to... Who wants? Chair. Well, I, I mentioned revenues. Revenues. Well, no, I, I, I want the, the net revenues. Okay, yeah. so I'm not sure what, what number generates that, but I mean, and you know, so which kind of brings me up to two other points that I kind of wanted to 
to, sure. to, to, to try it because we, I also don't want to take all your time tonight and we also have a few other things we can get to here. But uh, I, mean, I think that that is one of the perspectives that the town needs to keep in mind and, and understand better. And that, so I guess that brings me to a point where you mentioned that, you know, uh, a town would need a, a, a serious litigation war chest to resist what a developer might propose. But even just to consider what you're proposing, we're kind of at a disadvantage as well. We don't have any kind of a war chest. To con we, we, you know, I'll be honest with you, because it's in the it's in the town budget. Last year, the planning board budget was seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. Was it or was it was it three thousand? We don't have. I mean, and all of our mostly when we do technical review, the applicant is is paying for it. We do. You know, so uh, under, under the forty B process, what happens is. Uh, if you determine there's peer reviews you want to do, uh, traffic, civil possibly, um, you'd want to look at uh, maybe there'd be uh, you know, an envelope consultant. You come up with a list and the applicant and the board, well the ZBA, would come up with a list of what they want to hire for peer review consultants. And then a description of work is created that goes out to three firms, they come back, and then we escrow the amount Mm -hmm. For the peer review, we do not. We're not liable for your legal fees. Understood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, and it's, that that's that makes sense. That's kind of how we work with other applicants as well. One thing we don't ordinarily need to even consider with, because most we're usually not talking about projects that have this kind of an impact. But it's also usually for that reason not part of a technical review. I mean, we kind of I think we almost need a demographic study of what what kind of an impact this would bring to town and also what the, the tax revenue impact would be on that. And so I think it, the technical, I mean, the town needs to look at this even from perspectives beyond just the technical, have an engineer consider the, the stormwater calculations. We need to know, you know, like I said, aside from your anecdotal accounting of what happens in your projects, shouldn't some demographer go out and tell us this is really what you're going to get out of these projects, and, and if, if the town can make those determinations, we're in a better position to evaluate what you're pr proposing. So I guess you know that's one thought: is will you help us fund, you know, some kind of a demographic review of what we're doing here? Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know. I mean, David also has brought up some, uh, there are 40B uh, architectural guideline guidebooks that, that uh, you know, I'm sure that you've considered, but it seems like uh, in those guidebooks, it's very much emphasizing that you keep uh, your scale consistent with the adjacent neighborhood. And I know, you, you know, you said that because there is no adjacent neighborhood, you're not particularly impacted by that requirement. But this, I mean, uh, this does seem like a, a it, it kind of goes outside that handbook completely in, in, in terms of scale. So, uh, I mean, you know, well, I know you're depend, not gonna... That depends on what they come up with. I mean, certainly the right. parking and issue, but I, I, I've I, seen some of the work that they've done, and they seem to be very proud of the work that you do. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, there's the thing that I always try to drive home with this is we're making probably at the end of the day of construction costs and everything, this is going to be 60 or $70 million investment. So everything we do has to meet an investment grade standard because at some point in time, we may not hold this indefinitely. We may sell it to another. Ultimately, they typically wind up with an insurance fund or um, other investment fund. So when you review it and everything that has to be looked at. The investment quality of a development, they look at the parking and they could say, I don't care what Bradley says that they want that. The market needs more spaces. You need more spaces. We don't want you to shrink the parking spaces because we think we're going to have more seniors or we're going to have people that don't drive little cars that drive more trucks and they want to open their door and get out and not have to shimmy between that and the stupid car next to them. So the investment market goes through it, rips through it, everything from how the exterior looks, to what type of roof we use, to whether or not it's solar ready, to the number of EV spaces, uh, to the efficiency of the operation. They look at our rents. Um, 
if you're not guessing at what you're doing here, is what you're saying. So. Yeah, I mean, Jack is one of our analysts. I mean, he rips through this stuff all day long. We've ripped through it on a preliminary basis to determine where we walk away. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we also have to make a decision as part of the, the big thing. Is we've got to sell it and say, you know, we want to know, are you buying? And uh, so we have to get a sense of, if it's going to be a friendly 40B and we're going to work with the town, then we have more certainty that we're going to be successful. And we're more than willing then, at that point, to put big money at risk. As far as your request about demographics and that type of stuff, I mean, we can pull some white papers and some of this, the data that we have from our recent Plymouth deal, mm -hmm. because all the boards ask the same question. How's it going to impact our tax revenue? How is it going to impact our schools? Uh, and the first thing we looked at was schools, and yours was on a steady decline. Mm -hmm. not, not the quality, just the number of kids. Mm -hmm. Quality's going up. We just re redid our elementary yeah. six, is that through sixth grade, Dan? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the heard Triton needs a redo again. Right. Yeah. But, but the thing that, 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 if I'm not mistaken, the operating budget of the school, the actual cost of the teachers and actually running the school, gets picked up in your school budget, but the asset itself gets paid separate from your school committee. So not. You so know, we not have Rally owns Pine Grove School, but we're a member in the district that owns the Triton School. Okay, so you have a shared. <coughs> yeah. Uh, but but I think we could give you enough data that you would at least look at it and say, we're not going to have a whole pile of kids unless if the ZBA comes back to us and this says, oh, we want uh, a playground, we want slides, we want this, we want that. Mm -hmm. And we redesign our project to create all these play areas, then maybe you'll get some kids. No, I thought of playgrounds, but I said I'd rather have you chip in for <laughs> playground someplace else. The other, other observation on the site plan, you can't, I don't think you're going to be able to park in that finger that goes to the MBTA. I don't think it's wide enough. Again, I think he's out of scale. But so that's, that's a, he could be, and there's nothing better than to tell Clay he's out of scale. <laughs> I'll tell anybody. I mean, I ought to know scale at my age, you know. But that's a good connector and landscape feature getting to the MBTA. Mm -hmm. and the MBTA, because I lived near it, used to have 40 to 70 cars a day. Now it's back up to maybe 10, 12, 14, 15 cars a day. Yeah. Low point in the pandemic was down to two. Yeah, I, I sat there two different afternoons thinking, where are the cars? After the it was girl rollerblading. Where you see the activity is six, seven o'clock in the morning. Yep. First train is three minutes of five. It wakes me up sometimes, but and then six is good. Six thirty, you know, yeah, right through busy hours. Then in the middle of the day, it goes to I think two hour difference between a southbound train. Hmm. But it's it go a lot better if it was electric. It's my goal. So, uh, Bernie wants to talk. Oh, yeah, please. I'm sorry. This means that I got I had a, a question. Um, besides the wastewater plant and the fixed cost of purchasing the land, what other kind of um, parts of the project drives the need for 260 units? In other words, I assume that the 260 units you do, you, you, you build up your costs, cost of the units, cost of all the overhead items, such as the wastewater plant, mm -hmm. and come out with the 260 units. The big, so the big, what other big chunks of Obviously, you, you have a wastewater treatment plant that costs a lot of money. I mean, even if you build 300 units, that's 10 grand per apartment just for a wastewater treatment plant. Then you have to operate it. Your operating costs are much higher, so you want to spread that out over more people. The other thing is, a really good property, you want to have full-time management. You don't want to have part-time management. You get under 250 units, and it becomes a part-time management program. And you don't want to have an investment this large with people there just part-time. You want a full-time leasing and management crew there. The same people are there every day, running, caring for it. The, the other things that we do that are different in a lot of properties, um, 
eventually probably your conservation commission and maybe the ZBA will ask us about trash and that type of thing. Uh, when you have a larger facility like this, you can have trash valet. And what trash valet is, literally they come around every night on a set time and they pick up the trash at your door and they deliver it to the recycling bins, to the compactors. So you never have trash sitting openly. You don't have people going out and loading up a dumpster that actually gets blown open in the wind and then the seagulls have it all over the neighbor's yard. So you, you're able to control and manage your property better because you have more people footing the bill. Uh, you know, this is not a property that you want to have an absentee landlord. So it's expensive. Construction costs are very, very expensive. Uh, if I could tell you what the construction costs were going to be, uh, I'd be the smartest guy right now in New England. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is just a kind of a question that I think we be remiss if I didn't ask. If we were to work with you as a friendly 40B, what could we expect to gain differently than if we opposed it and, and tried to resist it as a hostile 40B? I mean, what, what, what benefit do we have to, to say to you today, let's work together to make sure this is the best project we can make it from day one, uh, to work with you as opposed to saying, you know what, this is too many and let's just have our attorneys fight it out? It, it never works when the attorneys fight it out. Um, it does work pretty well for the attorney. I believe you are one. Uh, <laughs> not on this end of the deal. Though. No, no, no. Yeah. no but yeah. but um, it, it creates an environment in the town that it, it's just not pleasant. Uh, you go in to look for a document, and you like if you're trying to do research on what you want the building to look like, and you want to look at historic documents, they, they say, Dad, file, file a FOIA request. Uh, you know, do that, you know, uh, Freedom of Information Act request to get documents. It's just not pleasant, and you're spending your resources on things because everybody's posturing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to protect their interests. Rather than saying, hey, you know what, we can support this deal, but you know what, we would like to see, you know, $25,000 in your program allocated for improving the crosswalks around town. So that for once, we don't have to pay them all ourselves. Uh, we want you to uh, put money towards, you know, an athletic program or you want to do things. Those are all asks. You don't get any of those asks in the hostile process. You can ask us to work on parks. You can ask us to assist you in other ways. And mm -hmm. it's a discussion. And if you're not spending all the money on an attorney, you can, you can often say, hey, you know what? And then you can ask for things, like you can say, hey, you know what, we want this building to look like a mill building. We want it to look like masonry. We want it to look like clapboards. We want it to be natural shingles. We want, uh, you know, we want to see bigger details uh, on your eaves. There's all kinds of asks, whereas it, with a 40B, it's like, thank you very much. No, I, I kind of, <laughs> so it's not, and actually I'm glad you said, you know, because that is what, more or less what I was getting at. I mean, I don't want to call it an impact fee, but to a certain degree, if you're willing to work with us on some of the things the town does need, you know, and maybe just to, as a sweetener for what we're, you know, say, listen, we will, we're going to keep you out of court, keep us out of court, let's make this a benefit all around, and, and so, uh, often one of the things that the people ask for is a fire truck, mm -hmm. you know, and it comes down to, okay, maybe we're not buying you a fire truck but maybe we'll help you out with the down payment. Because mm -hmm. fire trucks have just gotten too expensive. Um, yeah, truth is, I don't even know what the town needs, so I wouldn't be in a position yeah, and, to begin to tell you what, and, where and, we're at with that. And you just can't go to the point where you're buying your permits. No, right, and that's, it, right. So, but yeah. it, to the extent you can put a connection between the developer spending money in improvement that actually benefits the developer back, right. most guys most will, will. Yeah, right. will say, you know, hey, we can make it better. I mean. It's little stuff that means a lot. You well, know? I do think, you know, if we were to do it as a friendly and you were to work with an ad hoc committee that included somebody like David on it from this board, you know, to kind of work with your people. I mean, I know you're not going to do everything we want, but if no. we can, you know, but in terms of the aesthetics and the, we'd rather do, but, okay, so my yeah. final uh, thought on this, and I don't mean to, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. We need 200 units to hit our 10% ratio. 235. 235. 260. We're done. You got a cushion for the 2020 okay. census. Oh, I thought it was 265. That's, 
We have 65, so you subtract the 65 from the two. Yeah, he did the numbers today, though, and I think he's right. We have uh, 90 um, registered. 94 registered. Um, affordable units. According yeah. to the uh, housing production plan. And uh, of course, based that. That puts it like 4.2, you said, or yeah, something? The calculations I did were based on everything that's been added since 2018, in 2018, 2019, all the way up to the present. Uh, including calculating in Falcon Ridge and um, the 12 Main Street. Uh, so, so what we need, based on that, the, the total that we actually need is 235 to get up to the 10%. Well, what he's saying is that, say you do 260, you're up, you're, you're right, up and over. You're up and over, so you'll have some time. You know, eventually, a couple of years down the road, we'll have added enough residential that we'll need to actually do some of the things I've been talking about. Like well, there's two things that can happen. Mm -hmm. We can rewrite some zoning ordinances to accommodate affordable housing better mm -hmm. in our ordinance, and we can get rid of 40B. You can't. How can not get rid of 40B? You, you won't be able to get rid of it. Huh? You can't. You'd you have to insulate yourself by having the numbers. You, you got you got to insulate yourself by having the numbers, even if you rewrite your no, zone. No, no. On the state level, 40B is not a good program for the way to handle affordable housing. There's no way to guarantee that you can make it. It, it, it makes people do it. Yeah. But, but is it the best way to do it? No. It's better to scatter these units throughout the community. I'll, I'll show you a classic example. We're doing projects in Colorado. 320 units and 17 acres. The approval process took three meetings by Zoom, where the, the board was briefed by the engineers and the architects. They get a report, they read it, they look at our plans. Their engineers and architects go through it, make their edits to it, goes back and forth a couple times. It goes on the consent agenda. Consent agenda is read aloud. And the, is anyone there to oppose? No one there to oppose stays on the consent agenda. They do that two times. You're done. Developers are creating housing. It's needed like crazy out in Colorado. They're creating it. Developers don't go to towns if they're going to have a mystery. If they're not, if the zoning regulations are so clear cut that you can actually draw something and come to the building department with it, you don't have, you're, you're coming to I certainly to understand that, but I'm saying that Sociologically, it's better to have the affordable units scattered mysteriously through the town somehow. I don't know how to do that. But the, the problem is, it's a, it's a great idea, and everybody tries to do it, but even if you were able to write the zoning, get it on the town warrant, get enough people to vote for it, now you have to get somebody who's actually going to do it, build it, build it take that risk, that they're going to make money. So by the time you actually get that to happen and produce a unit, it's going to be years. And 40B guys still be knocking on the door saying, I want to do 120. It's going to be hostile. Uh, I'm going to do 160. And the thing is, even if you're one short, they can still come. And until you actually get units approved, and once you approve, say you approve this, and it goes beyond appeal 20 days after it gets recorded to the clerk. You then have safe harbor for one year. You would potentially have it for two. If you get an extension. Yeah. No, not even the extension. If, you if, if we don't pull all our building permits, and when you say, I want you to build a village, all I have to do is leave one building out of that village and not pull that building permit. Yep. And then we're still subject to... Yeah. You're still subject. One year comes and goes and another guy can knock on the door and file and he can be in there. So there's all kinds of little games they play. But I, I think if I was in your position, and if you go and you look at the towns that are at 10% or above, they went and took their medicine in one gulp and they said, I'm going to do a large apartment building as close as I can to the highway. Or Hingham, for example, they're notorious for putting large apartment buildings as close as they can and to, to, to Weymouth. Yeah. If, they can get it to, if they can get it so it's almost in Weymouth, it's approved in 60 days. If they can stick it almost on Hall or Cohasset, they'll approve it. They got to their 10% in record time. 
Wellesley did the same. They cut a deal with the Hanover Company. Well, that's like we say, hang out on 133, <laughs> making it a Georgetown line. Is Georgetown has the left to say that's Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some right. of them are like, let's move the town line. Right. Well, you use the same, similar, same or similar architects as you've used in the past. On this? Yeah. Clay Smoke is going to be the architect on this. Um, I've seen his work, I know his history, so. Yeah, I mean, it, there's no benefit for us to not do a well-received building, a good-looking building. We are going to try to stay away from balconies. We I do not like I, balconies. I agree with that philosophy because you drive by anything on the way to Boston and you got a balcony. Either they're not used at all, or they got every piece of junk that they don't mm -hmm. know what the, where like to put on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, the other thing, you know, yeah, we'll try to do a lot of walkouts on the first floor units. Uh, We'll try to do, rather than having individual balconies, we'll try to do a roof deck. We'll try to do that type of stuff. I mean, everybody loads up. I don't know if you've toured any of the newer, what I call the, you know, the top rated developers. Even if, you, if you've got time, stop into one of their leasing offices and look around. What do you think it, of Kirk uh, Bride, the, the one at the old Danver State? I did that's that one too. <laughs> that's got a uh, this professional management on site, and I think there's 500 units there that are. Uh, that, I mean, is, and that seems to sort of upscale. I'm just wondering if that's sort of where you. They've got a nice campus, some old buildings, new buildings. It's really spread. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, they, they had to fight to save the old buildings. Yeah. Yeah. The, old the, the problem is when you, when you make somebody save an old building. Please don't try to ask us to save that uh, Didex building. No. It's an old no, no. Butler building with a little bit of CMU in some areas, yeah. and it's it's not the greatest building. No, no, no. I just just wondering, is that the kind of project you try to you know? I mean that that draws a. a I think if if you look at the um, the best projects, probably one of the best operators right now uh, in Hanover took uh, our Plymouth. Hanover is one of the best. We did one in Swampscape with Hanover. You did? Yeah. Yeah. It's, what trade you? Uh, construction, excavation. What company are you with? Mineo. Oh, yeah. You did the one in Medford too, didn't you? No, Canton. I thought you guys did the one um, that they call, um, it's right on, uh, they call it the Mystic. No. Oh. We did the one in Bennett Square in Swampscape. Uh, but if you look at their stuff, our stuff is, we hope to always be better. Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of friends in uh, that type of stuff. Uh, most of the top guys, the gray stars, uh, usually have good properties. Um, Avalon has good stuff, mm -hmm. not okay. awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, just did the Wuben Mall with them. Yep. Um, you know, they're all good. I mean, nobody can build average stuff because unless they're building. 100% workforce housing or right. a tax credit deal. Uh, your investors and everybody want it to be superior. I mean, you brought, you brought a different perspective when you said that we can't. You know, we're not just building this for us. We got to have this place ready to be bought by somebody that's an know, institution. Somebody that's to do the due diligence on every aspect of this before they. Get, like, yeah. are you, I mean, I I used to, to comment to my clients that you got to do it better than the other guy because the people are going to notice you better than. Well, the, like right now, if you go into everything that we're trying to do, we're pushing nine foot six ceilings, like floor to ceiling height. We make our doors taller than the average unit. Um, you know, everybody is sweating the details right now to separate themselves from the competition. Uh, we were one of the first groups to start going away from gas. Uh, and we went away from gas because I couldn't stand having to deal with getting the gas permits and the meter racks that you have to put on the exterior of these buildings. Every one of these properties you look at, you probably deal with the headache more than anybody. I mean, if you've got 300 units, there's got to be 300 exterior meters on these buildings, and they're ugly as sin, no matter how much you paint them, no matter how much you put in front of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a problem. You don't there's need There's got to be some way that they could do it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, electric. But nobody wants to figure He's it. doing electric now. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we do is electric now. Yeah, and because nobody, and even the towns don't want you doing the gas. Right. Uh, I mean, there's so many controls in place that you can't cut corners. You can't build an average deal unless you're somewhere in some other part, not Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to build quality. I mean, your site work gets checked how many times during the process? Mm -hmm. 
Never mind by the superintendent for the owner, but you got the local inspector, you've got the gas inspector, electrical inspector, uh, you've got a structural engineer, you've got a soils engineer. I mean, these things are looked at so much, that's why they cost so much. I mean, if we didn't have so many inspections, we'd probably be done earlier, too. We'd be falling over sometimes, too. So. <laughs> like Miami. Well, I, I, but, do, I just don't like the building codes written by an insurance company. That's the way the building codes get written. But, but one thing, just um, to step aside of, uh, of the design itself, but then look at performance. These buildings are fully sprinkled. Uh, they're uh, super efficient. Um, they're designed so that even things like if somebody has to come for an emergency response, it's the elevators are oversized so that they can get a stretcher in the floor, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. You build a three-story or guidance-style product, you got to send the ambulance and the fire truck to every call. Mm -hmm. These can be handled by just an ambulance. Uh, I'm sure you consider, where you have the parking all scattered about, there must an ambulance could drive right up to it. What, what typically happens during the review process, we have to do a full fire truck and equipment study that gets mm -hmm. signed off by the local fire chief as well as our insurance company, everybody else is turning radiuses. Mm -hmm. uh, they look at every single corner. They look at uh, you know the fire equipment, can it access it, et cetera. So. Yeah, I guess it was. Does 260 units work for you? It would. We would not walk away at 260. If it was a friendly 40B, that's what we'd do. Uh, and that's what we try to do. And, and honestly, we would want to make, we want to make a really, really awesome project uh, because that's how we get the rents. I mean, if it's an ugly building, if it doesn't have the curb appeal, if it doesn't draw people up the driveway, it doesn't rent. Uh, so, uh, do you guys really think uh, 20 somethings with money are going to want to come to rally? It is sort of a sleepy place. I think what we're seeing is a lot of people trying to leave the city to get to the suburbs, yeah. and particularly the market right now, it's just unrealistic for those people to buy starter homes. Right. And also you have people not willing to sell their homes to the, that generation, so I think it makes a lot of sense you're seeing that. Because, I mean, there's not a real critical mass of restaurants or retail. I mean, there's only one decent market in town. Uh, it, but, I mean, it, we, we're, and, well, that's good. I just didn't know if uh, that, that fits exactly what you're... It's sort of a sleepy place. Yeah, trying to new people with them. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's an example. And to your point of exactly. taxes and stuff, these people that are coming out here are also going to want to go to the bars and shop and things like that. So there's one thing that's real estate tax and the car tax and stuff. You're also just getting people spending money at the stores and mm -hmm. gas stations and all that stuff, which is usually pretty well received. Yeah. Sure some of the downtown vendors Yeah, maybe we actually maybe we'll use the law offices in town. What we would love for a takeaway from this would be a vote of a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen to uh, endeavor to do a friendly 40B at 260 units. Uh, what we'd give you right away is we'd pull some white papers and some studies on school kids because it's already done. Everybody's mm -hmm. done it because. Uh, to make you feel better. Not going to make you feel great, but you'll feel better. Um, but I do think that we want to go explore what that would be like. And I'm not saying we're not, we don't want to take the next six months to figure out if we can do a friendly 40B, but we really haven't had any committee, joint committee meeting other than one, I think, on this. And I do think, you know, I'd just like to hear the Board of Selectmen, because I mean, I do think you probably got a little more opposition to the Board of Selectmen. I thought that they were considerably under 200 in terms of whether they wanted to see this project. The, the chairman said doesn't want a big project at all. Uh, mm -hmm. He wouldn't say what the size was. Uh, and then, you know, it, the problem you get is people, you ask them, what's too big? You know, mm -hmm. People always say units. And, yeah. and my response to that is, okay, if you want to cut me back to 240 units, I'm still going to build the same square footage. Right. Because I'm going to get my net. Yeah, I can't more. justify my own head how taking you from 260 to 245 would make any difference to the town. So, you know, so I can't really sit here and say, well, we want you to, you know, we need you to roll back 25 units and we're in. We're, we're, I don't necessarily, yeah. but that's just my thinking. I mean, 260 would put you comfortably over it, yeah. even if the 2020 census comes out. Uh, you've had a lot of single family development, um, so you guys could be close. And who knows what, and potentially more, come, you know, this would allow for more predictability about what would go in and we'd probably get more, you know, I mean, and, but, 
but Kirk's been talking about it, and so is David. We're going to still have to amend the, the, the ordinance to try to get at least diversity of housing, if not affordable housing, you know? Which I mean, well, I'll explore in the future, <coughs> yeah. so that we are still adding. I don't think we can do a letter of support yet, but I think we need another meeting with them. And but um, I'm just going to bring up, bring up about, because um, we they do have the, the traffic analysis, oh, we could we could maybe have um, our traffic, our uh, VHB take a look at it, or uh, because they have traffic engineers that yeah. probably, or we um, no, there was also a gentleman that um, Larry had referred us to as a traffic it, yeah. engineer. So one of one of those options, we could have them look at the the traffic. Would you mind if we had them look at the traffic analysis? Yeah, anybody can read anything they they want. The only thing I can tell you is, you're going to call VHB. And VHP is going to give you a bill for eight thousand dollars, and I could have called VHP and had them wrote this traffic study too. I could have probably get an estimate first. But yeah, but, I, 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 <laughs> but but no, I could. You could pick any number yeah. Yeah. of traffic engineers, and there's nothing they do. I mean, they're all signing as PEs. Yeah. So so long as a PE is signing the document, it can't be fabricated, uh, and it's all driven yeah. by. By math, I mean it's right. it's data in and data out. <coughs> so, I, but we I, do want some kind of an assessment on. I think that's just bigger than that location. I mean, I, I think like what I don't know if they can give us that before uh, with the numbers that are are given, or if we say that like, well, what would happen if we have a uh, something here at 260, 260 I think we units. have to talk about it because. You know, when Chris brought that up, I said, yeah, you're right. It's going to affect other little spots in town, and that may be okay, but how is it going to affect them? But right. those could be mitigated, but we want to know that ahead of time, because that probably would be what we'd ask you in the future to help us to address. Well, I, I need a light someplace or something yeah, like that. Not a, a, I think the, the problem you have right now is that the traffic that's generated from this is so small. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, if you take it, it's it's... At three hundred percent, as a percentage, you're probably right. It, it's you've got three hundred at three hundred and twenty units. It wound up being one car per minute that was added to the road. And think about it. how is anybody ever going to determine that that one car didn't come from uh, school traffic's a little tough right now. Yeah, 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 and and. But, but I'm, saying that's, I, I mean, I'm saying that's adding to that as well. Yeah, I mean, at the same right. time, we all, we do know that there just that there is a problem at rush hour at at one thirty three and Route One. Yeah, and I that, mean, you may not be adding much to it, but you are actually adding a, it, a significant amount of units that it could be reasonable to ask that, like, if the town wanted to get some help to like address that or mitigate that. Well, so well rather than you spending money, if you wanted to come up with a half dozen intersections that you think would be impacted, mm -hmm. we would take that, we'll send it to GPI, reputable firm, they do work for the state, and we'll ask them, hey, can you run this into the model? We need to get the information back to them. We'll do that on our own dime. And we're not going to do traffic counts and everything else. Yeah. They're going to pull the data they have, yeah. they'll load in the information, and they'll print out, you know, give us back a report and say, hey, here's what your potential is. I mean. They may come back. I mean, if you play with the timing out of that single signal, that might be all you need to do. And, and it's only like a five minute delay, even when it's a half mile back. It's not like. And, it's, and the biggest yeah. problem that, and I have to go through Hingham to my in laws a lot. You don't want to go through Hingham anymore, and it's got nothing to do with the radio traffic. It has to do with the school buses, and there's no way to fix it right now because. If you've got one little kid who that bus driver sees in the distance, they're waiting for that little kid. And if that kid is respectful, they're going to hump it. If it's a little kid with an attitude, they waltz on down, they, you know, they stop and pet the dog, and what was a 30-second delay is now five minutes. But what are you going to do? It's a little kid having a good time. You're not going to do anything about it. You're, gonna, you know, you're not going to put the kid at risk. But you know, people always say the schools, the traffic, the buses, but you can't fix it. Um, you know, the only thing that I can really tell you is, if I was in your position, I would rather have one concentrated development sitting on top of the T than having to deal with new subdivisions. Yeah, I disagree with that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think 
you know, we I like the idea of identifying some areas and maybe if we were work to cooperate more with you and align, then we could maybe put you on some of those projects that might help us alleviate some of those. I also think that traffic is not going to be the thing that vindicates the town's position that you're building too many units. It's just not Yeah, I mean, we, look, we already yeah. looked at the sight lines and everything. There's no problem with us. There's an existing issue from everybody waiting at that traffic light. I mean, I do still, th and this is the only reason I feel like I don't even feel like the town should take a little more in, and even this board before we make a recommendation, and maybe because it's not in our jurisdiction to even consider it, but I feel like if, if the tax revenue wouldn't cover what could be the impact, and I know you, you're saying it won't, and you make a pretty convincing argument that it won't, but I also feel like somebody other than the applicant needs to tell us that. You know, uh, uh, but because the thing is, if, if, if there's going to be greater demand on services than the revenue, then right away, I can't see how the town can get behind it well, from a friendly 40B perspective. But, but if it's not a friendly 40B and it's hostile, you still get the same whack. Okay. But if you get three 40Bs in town and they each do 160 or they do 150 or 110 or just 90, you're now taking those resources and you're spreading them all over town. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas you're servicing a majority of the people at one stop. I mean, you're not having to go down mm -hmm. the country road with the fire truck to check on someone. You're not having to send the emergency equipment. I mean, you're not having... If you create the housing at this one location, think about it. You don't have to put another plow on the road. You do a subdivision once you guys accept it, you got a plow on the road. You're maintaining that road. I mean, Not his subdivision. You put my exemption. Put your hands up back there. Are you stalled in the approval process? But no, I, no, I mean, no, no, no. Actually, I, I mean, as you get the developments, I mean, you are having, you know, as as the town spreads out, but as the town concentrates, you're not putting additional services on. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I mean, a lot of times they'll. Towns will say, oh, well, we're going to need a new fire truck. This is fully sprinkling. All those homes you're building, they're not fully sprinkling. Mm -hmm. so my, my new, the new ones are. My new yeah. one is. Yeah. Smart people are doing it because it makes sense. I mean, but you're really concentrating your services. But I can't convince you guys what's right or wrong. I'll try all night if you want. But no, no, I mean, actually, I'm you've done a fantastic... I mean, I, I, I didn't really... I'm not opposed to it. I just don't want to... I mean, look... You want to make as much money as you want. We want to get over the hump, but we don't want to give you, you know, give away we're, the store. We're, to what, you we're know. controlled in what we can make. Right. Uh, well, that's true, too. That's true. But, I mean, that's not, but I'm not opposed to you guys making as much as you can from a project, because mm -hmm. that's good for everybody. I yeah, think. yeah. You know? But there are limits on, you know, uh, the distributions that can come out of it mm -hmm. by the state, mm -hmm. uh, and we have to abide by those. So we, we can't, you know, these deals are not giant scores. They're good, good, profitable projects. Mm -hmm. uh, and the institutions like them because it's consistent, predictable income with steady growth. Not a lot of growth, but what, 3 to 5% probably in the rents most likely now. Mm -hmm. What so, I'm looking for is something that fits with the town and becomes a net positive for you and the town. And that can be done. It, it, we, we can certainly try to make it I don't fit. like the word try. You can do it. <laughs> But we are more positive than that. We, we, we will try to create a, a, a project that makes the town proud of the fact that they have it. Uh, you know, uh, because it helps. If you can do the best project you've done so far here, it helps you on the next one. Something. It's pretty tough to beat the deals in Colorado right now. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't count, though. That's Colorado. Those are funny people out there. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have too many bike requirements, too many ski requirements. Yeah. They do it. Ski in, ski out. Here, here you've got people that have been living here since 1620, you know. I know, I know. Hey, I live in Duxbury. My house is yeah. as old as can be. But, uh, you know, in, honestly, I can say it. If I wish my town was smart enough to get a large development and put it in the right spot. Instead, they fight over it all the time, and they get nowhere. Uh, and... You know, they try to put it in Kingston. They try to put, just do a smart, nice deal and be done. And give the planning board back their authority. 
But you got you got to you got to work to get that nice deal. So the majority of the people understand that it's the best thing going, which we can help you sell if it is the best thing. Yeah. No, I, I I think you know you raise a good point, and you know we'll endeavor to make it an awesome project. You have a landscape architect too, I'm sure. We actually have one in house. Smook has an in house. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he does a lot of uh, large project reviews, like uh, Pine Hills in Plymouth. He mm -hmm. was doing Union Point down away at the big Air Force Base. He was uh, their review before they get dysfunctional. Um, He's done a lot of that. He does a lot of. You got to remember, I'm on a design review board in Salem too, so yeah. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you on the historic commission here? No, I'm not on that. So, my significant other is on historic. Yeah. Well, I just the um, woman that was with me is my significant other, and she's historic. So, so she for the it. sake of moving forward, um, I guess what what are we asking for them before we can draft a letter of or whether it's in, in favor or not. I mean, I think well, we well, need time to discuss it amongst ourselves on what what the issues are that we need to have addressed. But well, is there something we want to achieve over the course of a couple of weeks before yeah. we meet in October? I mean, I just feel like uh, the thing is, it, it's difficult for the for me as you know as the chairman of this board to to, to contemplate. Making a recommendation that's uh, that's completely 180 degrees opposed to the chairman of the board of selectmen, so then we're just going to set we're setting up sort of a, I mean it's, I'd like to try to get the BOS on the same page as us. What the board of selectmen said to us, and chairman is a former planning board member. Right. Yeah. Um, Mr. Snow is also a former planning board member. Uh, what the board seemed to do, the chairman of the board of selectmen does not want a big project. He just doesn't feel like it's right, mm -hmm. and he said that he's just one book. Right. Uh, the rest of the members, uh, you know, I think saw it as something that's not really their expertise, and there was, would you go see the planning board? And that's why we're here tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so they punted. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's my fear with this. Yeah. I feel like we just keep kicking this can down the road. And if we try to, if, if this this crosses a lot of boxes, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. No, I think it does too. But I think that we should review it. And this is the first no, full meeting yeah. that we've had on it. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's hard without knowing, you know, the design, to say I think that's going to look nice in Rowley. Yeah. What? But I think. It, if we do get behind it, we'll have more of a say in what it looks like. That's Particularly true, with right, a gentleman right. like David to, to kind of to speak our uh, yeah. position. Yeah. 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 I get a feeling he will be there. I can agree that if it's an acceptable design, then we support it. 200, 260, I mean. It's a lot. It's a lot either way, though. I right. mean, yeah. you're already yeah. past the threshold of keeping it small. You're saying 50. I mean, that's totally out. I mean, you have. Well, that's what's in the rear view. So, quit, you know, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly yeah, I mean, bear if, at this if, point. No, I'm, but I'm not, I'm not saying <laughs> if, they, if they could do a great job with. Right, if you make it look right, we'll have a little control. I mean, I think a different developer, because that's not what you do, could do something different that, that would be a, a really good amenity. But this is the project that they're looking at for this site. So. I mean, if, if we're not close to the 260, we won't see you guys again. And that what we're really looking for is, you know, and honest feedback and say, hey guys, it's I mean, worthwhile you, for you to keep coming up here and spending time with people. Can you pick a better spot, though? I mean, if we're being honest, where else in town would you want to besides by the train station? Well, we looked at what I mean, I'd put it near, put put it near the highway and... Yeah, but you can sell at it the train station. No, the it's, train it's, station's it's, the draw, right? It is, absolutely. And that's it's what part we've got. But well, why are there six of them around the Beverly did, train station? That's, right, that's the draw. And it's part of the state governance attitude on where these things should be is near transportation. I mean, and Jack left you one of the studies on it. I mean, everything they say is put it as close as you possibly can. It's on top of it. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, if they'd give us air rights, we'd go over right. there. Uh, could build it right over. It could yeah, build it like absolutely. the station. Well, I've already thought of that. I guess you have. We'll go right over to your house. <laughs> no, that's in keeping with the rally field? Yeah. No, put it over the, <laughs> I, over the parking area. I, I got the sense what the Board of Selectmen was really looking for was for us to 
come vet it with you guys, get your gut feel, and have some type of response from you guys back to them, whether it's don't waste any more time with them. We're not going to even get behind this thing at 160 units, uh, you know, because it really, if, if you're not going to, you know, go to the 260, 250, uh, you know, we won't be back. Uh, and there's no need for us to, to kid you guys. Sure. To say, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to pass on it. Uh, I mean, uh, and we won't be the guys coming back. Uh, and somebody is going to develop this property. <coughs> do, uh, too good a spot. Do the, do the soil conditions impact your ability to put that sewer treatment plant in or not really? Because you guys well, can build whatever you from, need to build. From what we can tell, it's probably going to be good gravel. Mm -hmm. uh, you had an old gravel pit, I believe the town did, to the right of it. It creeped, actually, I've got an old site plan, and it actually creeped over onto that property, the gravel pit, and I've warped the property. So where the drop off is? Yeah. Drop off next to the property, my old I, I mean, you know, the grades on the site will be a little bit of a challenge, but, you know, we can balance the site out, we think, so it'll make it work. Um, it might actually work in your favor. I've never been scared of grades other than. Parking and roads. No, in, in if the grades really work to our advantage. Yeah, we'll on some of the sites I've worked on. <laughs> I mean, we may do some tuck under apartments. I mean, parking spaces. We may, but uh, just in certain locations. Um, uh, only you just made me think of something. Would you make any kind of handicap accessible units? And oh, yeah, those, those have the tuck under. We, uh, <coughs> we have to have handicap accessible, ADA compliant, ADA adjustable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole project, or is this designated units? Every, well, designated is a spaces. percentage. Okay. Uh, and then we have to have a percentage of ADA uh, that we can adjust to. I okay. Mean, gotcha. so, um, and there's a fair n number of people that you know, I think would in town that handicapped people that would really love this building because elevators. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're talking and, about handicapped. We're all handicapped. Yeah, everybody's got a challenge. Yeah. Um, but I think you'd find that, uh, yeah, there'd be a lot of people from town that would like this. Uh, but I would love it for you to say, hey, you know, uh, we'd rather go down a friendly 40B at 260 than lose this opportunity because there's going to be some other guys coming in in six months. And I'm not asking to call you on this. I'm not playing, suggesting we play chicken on it. But did I hear you right? If we said we're not going to do a friendly, you'd say we'll, we'll, go, we'll walk away all together? Most likely. Uh, not, I'm not putting that in, that's not going into my decision making at all because I think what you're offering provides the town a real benefit that, that we have to look at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it, there are so many different things right now that, you know, this property uh, has a lot of challenges to develop it that we really don't want to do a hostile 40 mm -hmm. uh in, in town here. And if we're going to do one, you know, no. I'm not. I, I, I'm, I just you know, want to know where we're... Unless I get back to the office tomorrow and... Yeah. Somebody said something. Somebody, somebody feels, you know, hey, you know, it's unbelievable. We've got to do this thing at all costs. Yeah. And, and I, but no, it's a hostile 40B is not fun. Uh, and it's... And you just, literally, you just blow money out the door. Well, you can ask the guy behind you. <laughs> I, I haven't been involved in it. <laughs> they, no, that, that, that's the old man. Yeah. Um, I know. I mean I, I mean, I do think David's point that we should probably deliberate to some degree about it without having. I am two basically weeks somewhat positive on in two weeks. the quality of the I don't know. How do we, can we deliberate without signing a public meeting? No, well, it, would be a, yeah. it would be a public meeting, but we could. Uh, we, remember, we had told you. You could ask us to leave. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> close the meeting. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's it has to be open to the public. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, um, but if we do, if we deliberate at another, another meeting, remember we talked about the second meeting, if we needed a second meeting, yeah. we could do it as a, I mean, we can do it here, but we could also do it as a virtual meeting. Um, I think it would help to hear what some of the other people in town are, are thinking. Or have I mean, all I would like to do is try to get it, like, you know, whether it's within a week or two weeks, with just a few, I mean, I'd like to get back with the Board of Selectmen. Here's, here's my, you think we know this stuff, I've been on this board for seven years, but 
when we deliberate as a board, we've got to do it in a public meeting. But if we've had informal meetings with board uh, other members that we don't do in public as a pu well, publicly, well, you, you yeah. could meet with. We could do a joint meeting. I mean, uh, as long as we don't have a quorum. Okay. And neither one has a quorum. Well, maybe we should just try to set up a, an informal to, to with just a few of the different department. Uh, you know. A member from each board, or something like that. Yeah, we don't know all the issues. I, I haven't talked to Brent. Have you talked and, to Brent? <laughs> no, no, no. The, uh, I just want Bernie. You got any? What's your feeling? I, 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 my assumption is that 40B is a pain in the neck for you guys, as a kind of sort of Damocles hanging over yeah. your head. If that's not correct, if that's a mis. Uh, no, it it mis seems pretty correct. Okay. All right, so if it's a sort of Damocles, then this is one of those things where you, you know, get it done and over with. Um, I, I'm, I'm not equipped to do, um, to, I'm not equipped to basically assess the state of all our jurisdictions. We have, we can just do our plan. I do think, you um, might, we might actually invite you as a member of water board there. to, or I don't know if Robert would be able to. From, next from the water board's point of view, and the, more, the, more, the more customers we have, the better. Yeah. So I, I have no, we have we have enough water, we don't have enough customers. What are you saying, our bell's going to go down? Well, potentially, potentially, I mean, you look at this, well, so. this is one, <laughs> one water line right. from their standpoint. So the water department's typically looking at it like, we've got, got all this infrastructure, the more the people we get paying, the better off we well, are. Believe me, that's it drives me nuts when we approve lots with wells. I'm like, get on the water system, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. because so, we need we need ratepayers. So the same my so. my yeah. bigger question, well, which I've already <laughs> I don't really pose, is that one of the selling points here is we've got an, an aging population in town, people ready to downsize, but not necessarily wanting to leave Ralph. So then that for them. For me, um, it becomes an economic question about you know you sell your house, what you get for your house, and will that basically pay for the rent for for um, most of your life? Right. Yeah. For for a, for a new um, for a new place. Uh, and but again, that, there are a lot of questions coming. In. I would never move to an apartment building, um, but there are but there are people in town who may well want to. To, to do that, in, but that that's that's your your yeah. point about the demographic survey, right. and uh, I don't know, I don't have a read of the customer base here, of the numbers of people who want. I hear realtors saying it all the time that there's no over 55, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but I don't hear you, people. From our standpoint. And what we find a lot is everybody says, okay, let's do 55 plus, let's do an age restricted deal. The people that want to come here and live here don't want that. They don't want to move into a building where everybody else, you know, the biggest thing on their agenda is whose weight they have to go. They, 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 they you know, that's a social event, you know. Yeah. They, they you want know to be in, here. I, yeah. in Irish funeral, you know, if there happens to be a cocktail party and there's a dead guy. <laughs> but but you, you go to most of these things. And my in-law is a classic example. I've been trying to get them to move out of their home forever. And they're like, no, I don't want to go live with old people. And there's some beautiful properties. They want a younger vibe. They want, you know, to have the ability to not be, you know, helping Mrs. Jones down the hall. They want some, I mean, all of a sudden he'd probably change his mind if he looked out at the pool area and he sees all these Young, beautiful people. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I, 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 not, I, I, you're going to get me into serious. serious I mean, serious, the rental companies, <laughs> the rental companies. Put me on this. During the lease up program, you know, especially in the greater Boston area, you hire college students all day long to use your pool for free, and you give them a stipend, and they come and <laughs> they get right? the trace of the trade. Huh? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, if somebody's coming to look at a property and they walk by and they see the pool area. And there's a bunch of healthy young people having a great time. Their decision process speeds up, and they're like, "Hey, I could be with them. I could be like them." They don't realize they look like me. But, but the, the other part of Bernie's equation here, of people moving to your property, is that their house then becomes freed up and becomes upgraded and additions. And we're seeing it in the work that we do as a single practice. And, 
what, what you were also realize, getting back to your tax issue, is and the taxes yeah, go up on that property. The taxes go up on that property, and it's and it, it goes up, but it's not on the person that's lived there forever. It's on the new, new person, person living in. It gets adjusted to the because sale you got price. A new kitchen, a new master bath, new master bedroom. And all of a sudden, new it goes up three hundred thousand in valuation. Yeah. So, uh, only because we're wasting your night. Did, <laughs> well, how many? You know, I know you would like an answer. We have the ability to put a meeting on. We could do it virtual in two weeks. We'd like to try to meet with a couple of different departments in the interim and then hold, it might be that this is the only item on the agenda, so certainly we want you to be there virtually and we'll all be there and we'll just have that deliberation at that point after we have some more input. But would two weeks be too much to ask for, you know, to have you what, what I'll hang in there? In, in the past, what I've gone back to the cell is I'd say, hey, they're interested in still talking to us, yeah. we'll give us two more weeks. I think they will. Okay. Uh, at some point they're going to say no, but... I, I'm they not any place to go. They they do, I believe. <laughs> they they have two properties that I believe they're going to uh, they move move into one. They go a lease option. They'd like to build a new I facility. Know they want to build. Yeah. <coughs> I think they will go. I think uh, you know their business is doing well. They run it out of two different facilities. It makes no sense with the labor shortages right now to run out of two facilities. So yeah. I think they will go. Unfortunately, on you, but. Um, yeah, well, I'll make a call tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to them. I'll ask them if they give us another couple of weeks. I mean, that's really my big concern is talk being so dis uh, just so uh, opposed to where the other parties are uh, or stakeholders, I guess. You know, and, and I don't think I mean I understand Mr. Pierce's. He's got his own take, and at least he understands he's one voice. But you know, but you know, if he, I wouldn't mind hearing. I, I didn't go to that meeting. You know, if there's any. If it's just a bias against larger projects, or is there something more to it that, you know, because if he's got, you know, if he sees from the information that he has that this is going to be a net revenue drain, I, I think I could, I, I, I don't know how any, I mean, I think we'd be remiss as town officials to, to get behind right. that, you know? Yeah. So, but I don't think, I mean, I think you guys have proven that that's not going to be the case, but I want to find out also, why he doesn't feel yeah, that way. If, you, if it is a net revenue drain, it could always be a, a, a bigger revenue drain that's actually forced on the town by the, by the state just because of the status that they're in. I mean, that's gone and gone. I, don't, I hope everybody understands where we are yeah. with, our, with our numbers, but we're at like 4.2%. And we haven't increased in a couple of years, so that if somebody does come in and, and does appeal, they're going to win. Right. So it right. should be understood. I mean, right. the, the problem that it really faces is, you know, do you want to solve it at one location or do you want to solve it at three different locations scattered about town? Some people say, oh, it should be out by the highway, it should be here, it should be there. Well, well I think the other telling thing is that since we did the master plan and a housing production plan, we've gone backwards in affordables. Yeah. So developers aren't coming forward with what we have to try to present it. Yeah. Except for, I think that was a, that was an offset because we lost one and then gained one back. Right. Right. <laughs> so can I develop a game, develop a game to unit. Can, yeah. I, can I ask you for a quick straw poll? <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, I think we can we'll start down the other end. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? I'm favorable right now until I, I see a little more, but right now I'm, I'm. Yeah. With the 260? Yeah, with the 260. No, I'm going to drop to 250 because you mentioned it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, sold to the 260. No, we'll, I can straighten him out. <laughs> I think the ability for us to be able to have some say in design and how it progresses is important. Yeah. And that's when you bring the architect and to see some and, and work with you all the way through. I'm positive that we can come to some. These guys want to keep talking rather than giving you an answer. I think it, he was asking for a yes no. But, yeah. Well, well like we, want, we, want, we, we can't, he yeah, didn't ask for it. He just wanted to know whether we were feeling positive. That's all. Yeah, straw poll if you, if you think we should continue spending money and time. And I would like to just quick comments as to what just, you think it just could have been. Just the two of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's your time uh, worth, anyhow? No. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get a better spot, and I like the idea of it all being wrapped up in one project. I do too. Yeah. Just be ahead of it. 
I, I, I see think you. it could be very, very good and positive for the whole thing and your future as a company to be able to do this the best you possibly can. And I, this is, I say this to clients all the time, and sometimes they don't listen, but sometimes they do, and they make more money. I mean, if, if you look at our colony place development, I looked at the largest online. outdoor successful retail, we don't own it anymore because we're smart enough to sell it. But if you look at the bridges, the sidewalk, there's nothing in that deal that really was dictated by the town. It was all dictated by the market and our founders, you know, desire to not create something that's average. I mean, nobody puts a granite curb like we do. Uh, you know, you look at our bridge going over the, the entry to that. Uh, you don't know that there's a large lifestyle center off that road, but when you turn that corner and you go into that big bridge with all the arches, you know, all of a sudden you got the flavor. And, you know, we get phone made, calls. And you made it special yep. by doing that. Yeah. So you, you like the idea of control and influence. Yeah, I mean influence. I mean if you if you want a, a yay or an A for me, I'm I'm definitely leaning towards yay. And I feel like if we I mean uh, I'd rather be over that hurdle. I'd rather be over that number and not see I'd rather see you uh, like rather than fight with you not that it doesn't sound like we would be anyhow, yeah. but if there's any efficiencies to come out of a friendly 40B, if they can, in order to the benefit of the town, we'd like sure. to see that happen. Yeah. You yeah. know, I understand that. Uh, but uh, so, you know, my really impediment is just not stepping on other departments and and hearing them out, uh, and and just making sure that you know we're not yeah, putting the town. Up. Nobody's really talked to the fire department yet. Of, you no. Know, and issues they might have, or conservation. Well, I've always wanted to hear more from the Treasurer's Department about how yeah. things get spent, you know, but uh, the Board of Selectmen have a lot to do with that, too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, conservation, I think, uh, you know, there's one area that we're, we're going to, do you have a 25 or a 50 foot setback? 50 or better. You have 50? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The state only requires us to go to 50, um, but I don't think there's going to be a problem in, in respecting the conservation setback and staying almost out of their jurisdiction mm -hmm. uh, to the greatest extent we can. Um, the fire department, I think the fire department will probably embrace the fact that it's a fully sprinkled building with 300, you know, with every, whatever number of units. Would they need to be trained differently to fight a fire in a project like that? No, no. The, the, the biggest thing nowadays is, is not so much after it's completed, it's during construction, mm -hmm. and the fire departments are more conscientious of that because of the ones that have been destroyed during the working process. Mm -hmm. There's clear cause yeah. for those fires, they weren't accidental, but... I think one, it, one thing that they would be is about the uh, the ability of the, of the ladder truck to be able to reach yeah. but with the fully behind and, and at the yeah. top of the building. They, we, pro we have to provide a study during the okay. process. Well, so, you know, for that reason, I'd like to take the extra time, but if we can just do a meeting in two weeks, uh, it wouldn't certainly, hopefully it wouldn't go this kind of duration, because at that point, we'll have the information, we've already had this conversation, and, you know, in, unless we have something to tell you that we're not talking about here today, you know, I think you... And if the board members, if you're not, you know, as a group, if one or two want to jump on a conference call, uh, or call us individually, call us, we're glad to jump on a Zoom. Uh, and we can talk through our ideas. I don't think we're going to get to the point right now that, you know, we're going to design the building mm -hmm. uh, because we're not going to design something unless we know we, we got a deal. Yeah, and, and, and I think if we, got a, if we can work it out, then we'd rather be talking to you early on with the design anyhow. Not, I mean, your design, but, you know. Yeah. What about the white papers and the market data that they said they could provide? Do you want to get that in the meantime to look at it over yeah. before? If you wouldn't mind, uh, yeah, just, sorry, yeah. Right. We'll get, uh, Anything we can pull together for you on the kids too, and we'll send it over to Kirk, and he can distribute it to the group. I mean, so that, I guess that's one last question. Uh, I said I put a number on it of a hundred thousand a unit. What would you think the, the, the assessed value of a unit is going to be? Geez, I'd rather see him at twenty-five grand. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want to answer the question. I, I, I I'd be pulling it because that's how we, that's the only way we can come up with a revenue number. I, I think it, it's the calculation in Plymouth was that it was going to produce somewhere between 700 and a million dollars in real estate tax revenues. That was 320 units okay. on 
roughly 15 acres. So it should be the same. Plymouth has a very high tax Do that basis to it. Yeah, yeah, it's off the charts too. Um, and um, so it's it's a big number, but every unit you take out of it lowers that revenue sure. stream to you. So, uh, but yeah, right, right, and it'll also have some impact on the, the, the school. The, the, we'll get we'll pull as much data as we can for you and get there. it back to you, and you guys can read it and tell us we're on drugs and leave you alone. We'll go away. We'll never say that. No, <laughs> that, I mean I would really do appreciate your time, and I think you know Thanks. we'd like to try to work with well, you more. We do have an awful lot of marijuana facilities in town. It's a big cell right there, right? <laughs> and you got a new sign. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so hey, thanks a million good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we want to do we want to set uh, I uh, wanted to say, oh, good. what's the date for uh, the 27th? Uh, the 27th is two weeks exactly. Um, Do you want us to leave those here? Uh, you don't take your heart, but take the. the, the yeah, we've got a small yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you have a card? Thank you. I think the last time I saw you, you didn't have a card. Yeah, I didn't have a card in my past. I see you got mine pinned in the outside of your thing. Wednesday, October 27th. Is that okay. Everybody good with that? Yep, that works. 27th? Yeah, 27th. David, you? I will. Time, 6 o'clock. You're okay if we just post it as a virtual? 27, and I got a 6, but it seems real hard. Okay, it'll be remote. Yeah, I'm in my sale meeting is on that evening, but I just do 6 to 7. Thanks, guys. Seriously, you have a question. Don't have to take the call, and we can. Yeah, we will I mean, if there's something that comes out of that town meeting, uh, the, the board we do, yes. we'll let you know. Yeah. We can fill in a blank, you know, yeah. that, that seems relevant. And if there is some particular item, that, a question thank you, you, you want to spend reason yeah. with the board. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks for all your time, guys. Thank you very much. Jack, appreciate that. Have a good night. What, what you good could, thanks a lot. <laughs> Dave, what you could do, the two other schemes that you showed the elevations of, get a scan of it and send it to, uh... You, you mean the right. project in, uh... You mean the, the mill building versus the, mill the other... Building and the other it's building. the same building, it's one's contemporary, one's... Yeah, right. it's send, send a copy of that because it requires a discussion. Okay, okay. we'll send it to you. And it helps. Okay. <coughs> Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. And Mr. DeCoolis, thanks for uh, sitting, hanging in there. This was a big... You yeah, know. no, I understand. Okay. So we, no, we had a former 40B on our project, and uh, we know what it's like. Uh, not quite the scale, but certainly this is a more integrated project into the landscape than what you just saw. Yeah. Yes. Less than 10 percent of the sewage, and more <laughs> tax revenue per unit. Uh, You're not having. To, we don't have to have that conversation. Yeah, and 15 acres of open space. That's right. But aside from all those benefits. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. But that was a hostile. It was hostile. But that's well, okay. I mean, transportation oriented developments, are, they've been did going you, on now you, for a decade. Did yeah. you have an architect on that one? Not really. But what do you mean? It? You, were de you designed it? Which one? No, the other one? No, on uh, Daniel's Road. Did you mean Marion Way when they were talking about that 40 feet? Um, no, 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 no. I was not involved in that. I know you did. Stayed far away from Very far away. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, I understand you got your plans submitted to Mr. Graham today. Yeah, uh, good evening, Mr. Oh, thanks, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have a lot of time for this tonight. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jim Nicole is here uh, for the Danielsville LLC project, and uh, we do not have a full set uh, of revised plans yet, but what we do have is uh, a set to show you, including, uh, is Larry here, by the way? Is he still awake? Uh, yeah, he's, he's on there. Um, uh, and I just Probably told him that we're back up, so let's see. I sent him a text. Hey, oh, there he is. Great. I'm having a hard time staying awake, too, Larry. This is, uh, yeah, I wasn't so, expected. So, so uh, yeah, what I wanted to do is just talk about uh, the project. So, Kirk, uh, why don't we start sheet uh, uh, Let's see, everything's C3, C4. Yeah, we're is that explosive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're gonna just go right to sheet C five, Larry. Larry, did you have a chance to output those drawings? 
Um, anyway, let me explain quickly what's going on here. Yes, I have it in front of me. Go ahead. Okay, great. So, um, David, when I first brought this project up, or maybe a couple months in, you were talking about <laughs> Fallensby Lane, right? Newbury, I think it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I found a project actually much more similar to what we're trying to do here. And it's actually only a couple of miles away from this. It's in Ipswich. <coughs> it's Partridge Berry uh, Lane. It's in the western end of Ipswich. Uh, right near uh, Hood's Pond. Hood's Pond, yeah, yeah. across from Hood's Pond. Really nice neighborhood. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. Shared septic system. Aren't they uh, uniform condos? I mean, they're no. all... No. Oh, they're not. Okay, they're simple fit. lots. Yeah. Shared septic system. No sewage easements, by the way. And it's a public way. Uh, so How I did was, they get around the... It worked. And it's... Uh, so it, it's... Um, you know, they didn't have any sewer easements. Everything on record does not show it. But they have a homeowners association... So we're structuring ours you know, very similar to what they did, and uh, um, you know the, the thing that what we've done here is we've sort of uh, worked out the sewage uh, design a little better. Um, what we're doing is we're flowing everything. Every house unit is going to have a 2,000 gallon septic tank. It's going to flow by gravity to a 9,000 gallon equalization tank. Is and that the only crossing of this main roadway? On the main roadway, yeah. But that's not. And then way. there's another one here at lot eight and nine. Actually, for the benefit of the public, should I show it up here? <laughs> yeah. uh, so we have uh, septic uh, discharges from, uh, we'll start here. One, two, three, four, and five are going underneath the main road. Uh, six and seven are going to discharge in an easement right here. And eight and nine are going to discharge in an easement here. They all go to a 9,000 gallon equalization tank. Title five for shared systems requires that there's a 24 hour storage in case power goes out. So uh, this tank will store 6,000 gallons, which is our daily flow. Again, less than 10% for what you just saw. But um, the 10,000, the 6,000 gallons will then flow into a pump station, and then from the pump station to a valve pit, and then alternating flows to each one of the advanced uh, Presby fields. Um, one of the things I'd like to ask is whether we could put an accessory building, because we are going to need pump control switches, and uh, possibly even a backup generator, we're thinking. So would an accessory building somewhere in this vicinity work? Uh, would you be amenable to it? Like a shed? Well, you know, like a shed. Little, I mean, you know what they did over at the see. golf course? Every they put a gazebo. Oh, okay. It looks like a gazebo in the middle of their, their open space, right yeah. next to it. And yet it's screened in, but you don't go in it because it's got their equipment okay. in it. All right, so you're okay with an equipment type shed yeah. you know, if we hide it and create something nice like something that? Something nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, draw it up. Okay. Um, and then, you know, Larry had also asked about this lot B here, you know, what's it for? And, and there may be an accessory building there for maybe lawn cutting. I mean, maybe, you know, the, uh, the homeowners association is going to have a riding lawn more or something like that. They can, they can, the homeowners can store maybe something in a building there. So that's, that's just potential homeowners association accessory use. Um, that one you don't have to draw on. Yeah, okay. So uh, the big thing, the big change that we've made here though is with stormwater. And what we've done is rather than have the infiltration chambers be under the road like we had before, we've moved, we've uh, actually made the first infiltration, the stor first stormwater control structure an open uh, sedimentation basin, a bioretention basin. Uh, so we're going to have two catch basins that are going to flow into that. Larry had asked for us to put a catch basin out on Daniels Road. The problem we have with that is the utilities. There's gas, water, there's all kinds of crossings involved. We just would like to waive that need for, for a catch basin there. And when we reconstruct that 125 feet of road, um, what we'd like to do is actually create some type of a swale because there's a brook right up here. And the water's running down to the brook and then flowing and then circling back around. So we'd like to have some type, some type of surface controls rather than putting a catch basin on Daniels Road there. So if Larry wanted it in the middle of Daniel, Daniels Road, I guess you just change the grid so that everything flows back towards your yeah. catch basin? Yeah, well the problem is, you know, in this curve here, you want it super elevated as you're going around right. the curve, yeah. right? And so you really, you need the catch basin on the inside. Uh -huh. And that's where the gas and the water are. Oh, okay. So, they're like right at the, the gas line is actually up, um, just straddling the edge of the pavement right there. It's just really, it's not a good spot for a catch basin. Mm -hmm. So um, we think that we can adequately uh, create some surface controls here. 
to uh, help address that. And we, uh, we don't think there's a surface water problem there right now. And we also think that our two catch basins here are going to capture all the runoff coming down before they get out on the I mean, if, 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 if you could see, observe, I've never observed a surface water yeah, there problem is, there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and part of the reason why is because it's so steep. Okay. The water is running down quickly and then hopping over into that stream. So, um, okay, the next thing is uh, um, this stormwater basin here, infiltration system number two. What we're doing is we're creating an easement on lots two and three and creating a four uh, set of four rows of chambers uh, for Caltex that are, you know, going to basically be discharged and then overflowing into the wetlands. What we've done is created a retaining wall here behind lots two and three. So this is going to be an open backyard. And um, the height of the retaining wall in the middle here is close to eight feet. So I don't know, Larry, are you going to want a, a section or a detail of uh, the retaining wall at the back of lots two and three? Uh, I, don't, I couldn't say at this point, Jim. Uh, perhaps uh, one thing that comes to my mind is with that height of wall, with the proximity of the uh, infiltration chambers, uh, whether or not there might be an issue of breakout there. So, okay, but we can look at that. Of? What's that? What are you building it out of? There's, yeah. there's uh, uh, in the stormwater management regulations, that I think there is a, uh, it pertains mostly to uh, infiltration systems and separation uh, to slopes over 15%, I believe it is. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, so I mean, what we what we might do is put a vapor barrier, right, or a uh, similar to what we do on septic so systems, right? Yeah, that, that's possible. I, I just I just saw that uh, just while we were looking at it. Yeah. Okay. So um, and and Troy just brought up a good point of uh, maybe some more details as to exactly how. As a matter of fact, Mr. Chairman, if you look at the next sheet, C seven, um, you'll see a better detail. Of it. C C eight. I'm sorry. C seven. C seven. So uh, yeah, I think I think it probably deserves a detail, right? Showing like maybe concrete blocks, like some of the shape blocks, shape blocks, yeah, shape blocks, right? Right. Okay. Um, so uh, and then the other thing is uh, this. This is uh, Kirk's now gone to. Yeah, no, no. This is good, Kirk. If you could just zoom out a little bit. Um, and then infiltration field number three. Um, what it is, it's, it's almost like a big fat shoulder on the side of the loop now. And so you could actually park on it, you know, if there was overflow parking if you wanted to. Uh, the only question we have is uh, whether you want a guardrail. You know, it's like uh, 20, 20 feet or so uh, from the curb to where the slope starts going down. Does that deserve a guardrail along the edge of the uh, pavement here? If it does, you're not going to be able to benefit from the off-street parking. You know, it's good up to Larry, but there's a couple of guardrails, you know, in, in my neighborhood that don't need to be there. Yeah, yeah, they deserve to be taken. Care of. Right. I agree. Yeah. So I wouldn't, wouldn't like to, you know, I wouldn't, if yes, that was the standard we're going to meet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a problem because of snow plows, right? Right. I mean, the snow plows and the, the heavy snow just, they're not put in well enough to, to deal with those loads. But I just don't think we need it, but I just wanted to bring it up as a potential issue. Uh, you know, if, if, Larry, if you think that we need a guardrail there, please, you know, just let me know as soon as possible. Um, so uh, the next issue I want to talk about is water. Uh, Larry, one of Larry's comments was that he thought that the water department preferred water lines under the shoulder. I spoke with Bob Gray yesterday. I was going to have a meeting with him today. He had an accident yesterday. But... Um, he uh, is fine with water being under the main portion of the road. He said he doesn't have a problem with it. So, um, you know, we, we feel as though, you know, keeping it under the middle of the road is fine, and especially because it's separate from the electric and uh, telecom utilities, which are going to be on the left shoulder. On the right shoulder, we've got the sewage and the sidewalk. Um, so we feel as though the water under the center would work fine. Um, one of the things Bob did bring up is that they are allowing now uh, blue brute plastic pipe rather than duct aligner. Um, and they've used it for at Falcon Ridge. What's that? For a main? For a main, yeah. 
And we're a little concerned about it, quite frankly. Um, we don't know whether or not it's safe. I mean, the American Water Association is more than likely has approved it, but um, he is allowing that. So we're just looking at the material selection, whether it's going to be the blue boot plastic pipe or Dr. Lyon. It's like uh, Schedule 80, right? Yeah, it's thick stuff, yeah. With different uh, composition, though, Troy, right. Right? because it's potable water. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, next issue that I want to talk about is the sidewalk. Uh, Kirk, could you go back to uh, C5? Mm -hmm. um, one of the comments Larry made was, um, well, what's the purpose of the sidewalk? Like, where is it starting down here? What's, you know, what are we going to do down here? And then, you know, how does it transition through the parking lot at the end? Um, as far as the beginning of the sidewalk goes, I mean, what we're envisioning is just leaving an open space there. And then if something happens with the Ricker property further down, connecting to uh, Haverhill Street, then, you know, that, that's something that can be done in the future. But we're just sort of terminating it right here at the intersection with Daniels Road. And Are you doing bituminous? What do you, what's this? So we're doing granite at the entrance yeah. and bituminous the rest of the way. And then sidewalks? Sidewalks bituminous. Okay. No uh, concrete at the entrance way to dress it up a little bit. We could, yeah, no, we could do that. ADA pads or something. Yeah, so like, yeah, right here. There's yeah. uh, t what's it called those uh, pads, those the uh, ADA one pads. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they get beat the heck after oh, yeah. ten years, right? Yeah, they make cast ones and stuff now. Yeah. So the, what Troy's talking about is, have you seen yeah. those uh, t those terminate uh, the uh, bubbles? They're yeah. like little yeah. dimples, right? And the purpose of them is for blind people, right? They're they're ADA even though they're bright yellow for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think red too. It is red, yeah. Uh, but, but what Troy's suggesting is maybe a concrete pad here, right? Maybe that is a good idea, mm -hmm. right? Maybe, uh, maybe we do like a six by 10 foot pad or something um, that maybe, maybe you could put something on in the future. So we, what do you think of that, Larry? A concrete pad at the beginning of the sidewalk? Well, yeah, if, if, you're, if you need to put the, uh, the warning strip in that you're talking about, but at this point it goes nowhere. Yeah. I, I wouldn't worry too much about it and just bring the bituminous down and, you know, and stop it rather than encouraging a bat or something there and encouraging a, a crosswalk that's not there. Yeah, maybe. Thought anyway. Yeah, maybe more of a soft landscape, the soft uh, uh, surface approach. You know, you end it into a soft rather than hard. All right, we'll, 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 um, I'll mull that over with you, Larry. Yeah, the, the other thing to maybe think about is uh, school kids, where they might be picked up there. Right. Or not. Nice bus stop. Yeah. Uh, so a bus stop, in which case maybe a, in, a, in a concrete bed, which is well off of the road for kids to congregate on while they're waiting for the bus. Old bench. Yeah, but I think yeah. that, that <laughs> makes a great deal of sense. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. As long as people aren't speeding coming down Daniels right. Road. I mean, it's a dangerous curve, as we all know. We're improving the sight distance here at Daniel at, at this first curve. Um, but, you know, the bus is going to have its flashers on, right? Um, I mean, and, you know, I'm sure you, you guys are working off the road a little bit as much as it can be, you know, yeah. without being uh, on somebody's yeah. lot. But, uh, no, I think... That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that deserves some more design thought. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about was the electrical system. Uh, the last sheet that I have here uh, was a design from the Raleigh Light Department's uh, consultants, PLM. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I emailed that to you last minute, Larry. Did you get that? I don't think I got that one. No. Okay. It's from Matt Dunnels at PLM. And um, what, this is the electrical subsystem here that uh, would go in. What uh, we're doing is we're moving a utility pole number 13 from here to here. And Matt and Raleigh Light are proposing a new light pole here rather than come around this big bend. Just go directly overhead mm -hmm. here and then go down underground. So um, what would happen was there would be a transformer, uh, or rather this is a sectionalized cabinet. Uh, the rectangle is a sectionalized cabinet. And then the square is a transformer pad. Now, these sectionalized cabinets, um, like for instance on Emily Lane, uh, what happens is they get beat up, the snow plows, and then they start tilting. After a few years, you're going to start seeing them <laughs> like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, right? It's, um, they, they just don't hold up well. And so what I'm going to ask is to see if we can bury them. 
You know, mm -hmm. just keep rather than having them above ground, see if we can go underground with these sectionalized cabinets. Um, so we've got one cabinet here, transformer, cabinet and transformer, crossing the street, cabinet, transformer, cabinet, transformer. So that's, and then um, end of the road. Um, the other thing that Matt did here was he located street lights. <coughs> so we've got uh, one, we've got one, two, three. H have you found that email, Larry? No. I, I, I don't Four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight. You know, he's got like eight street lights, right? Nine, nine maybe, right? Nine street lights. And um, we think it's too many. <laughs> I mean, that would be a pretty bright, pretty bright project, right? Eight lights. So um, what we're proposing is uh, right in front of the houses is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're the bedroom window. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a spot yeah. that right. And the worst, the worst part about lights, though, is late at night when you're driving home, right? You don't know if it's another car or not, right? right if right. you're not familiar with the neighborhood. Now, what we're doing is we're proposing on sheet, uh, on, on actually sheet C5 through C8, Larry, uh, the street lights are a triangle symbol. So we've got one here so that if you're coming down from Haverhill Street, you're not going to be blinded by this light. You know, it's not mm -hmm. going to be like in your face. You would if you're coming this way. You might pick up that light. So we've got one light there, uh, a second light down here at this intersection, and then a third light down here facing, right here, facing the three-car parking lot. So, you know, we're going from nine lights down to three, but we, we think okay. that's all that's necessary. Oh, yes, the pole. Yeah, so we're still, um, so we're thinking maybe 20-foot poles, right? Nothing to, doesn't the, I mean, and... I, I hope you do pick a good light pole, because it, if you buy this through the town, or... or they just have highway, very industrial looking. Uh, yeah, it can make a big difference in the light itself, right? I mean, right. They have a couple options. No, they don't have a smaller option. Uh, they do. Yeah. I think right. Right. They, they have a nice, came around on it, but they, they haven't have always used so, to. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, if you have, that's your call. But yeah. you, if you have some discretion there, use it. Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> we'll, we'll actually show a light pole uh, detail. Yeah. Nine is too many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who has to pay for those lights, though? We will. We'll pay for those. Yeah. Do you have to pay the monthly bill? The no. HOA would have to pay yeah. it. Yeah. Just, no. Do you remember we had that case? There was one other town project in town where the HOA didn't know they had a light bill and the town billed them for years. <laughs> and then they found they had some huge bill. It wasn't a public way? No, so it was they heritage. Pull a yeah. permit and it wasn't a public way. Light bill was something like that, yeah. Okay. $10,000. Uh, so, anyhow. So anyway, uh, that's where we're at. So, are you okay with three lights? Sounds more reasonable than four. Yeah. I mean, why would that, I think? I think you need another one. You only need some of something on the curb. Yeah, something on that curb. Yeah. Yeah. curb where we're I mean, the thing is, a lot. So wherever your maintenance shed is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe there, maybe yeah. we got our shed here. So somebody's got to go over and get something yeah, out of the yeah, shed yeah. in the middle okay. of the night. Yep, yeah. I mean, yeah, this would be a perfect because you wouldn't want it to be in the. When the houses are clustered, you kind of want to be better if they're so we got one away. Here. We got one here pointing this way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's where your parking spaces are at the end of the sidewalk, right? Yeah. Maybe we have four of them. That was fun. You're about station four on your loop road. Yeah. Yeah. Up to the top. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. That's our status. Um, we're going to have the full set ready at the next hearing on the, what was it, the 27th? Uh, the 27th no. is the, uh, but I don't know if Larry... If, uh, yeah, he's not going to have it ready for furry. Yeah. No, we're Larry not doing it on the 27th. We're only doing just that one. We're going to have a ton of minutes we didn't do tonight because we're going home in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So. But... I agree. So... <laughs> The thing is, well, I, I'm not trying to, I, I just don't want to waste your time by coming in here on the 27th if Mr. Graham's well, not virtual, right? It would be virtual. Yeah. No, I agree with you. We're not going to, Larry's not going to be ready. Right. He's not going to have the review done. I mean, I would like, assuming that we have a successful, or pardon me, a, a supportive review out of Mr. Graham, we really are close on this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're not looking to do five more meetings right. here or even no, two be, more necessarily. Next, but next we're not, meeting. Yeah. Yeah. But so let's do, we can keep to with all this said. The only thing that I, I want to continue to remind or encourage you to provide work with us on is is that legal mechanism by which we deal with this private public 
road. Mm -hmm. Have you any chance anyone will well, write on a private public? I mean, we're we're moving <laughs> forward private. with the uh, with the um, goal of having this be fully public. I mean, we're going to present it. Is, there All right. To be a, it needs to be. You need to have a contingency. Yeah. No. 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 But well, I think what he's saying is the paperwork. I think before we approve it. We want to have that contingency in place, the, all the documentation. I mean, so I think what you're saying, because we know we've kind of been through this, and I don't think we've always been talking direct, you know, to, I, 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 I mean, but, but just so I understand what you're saying, because I mean, you're, it's your project. Mm -hmm. We've told you that we'd like you to build it to a public road standard, but then maintain it as a private road until the town... Mm -hmm. And yet what you're saying is you're going to do that, but also ask the town to accept it presently. Absolutely, yeah. That's but, fine. But we will have the contingency. The fallback. Like the fallback. Yeah, we're all on yeah. the same plan. Yeah. I think we are. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. But we do want to probably get that enough time before the next meeting. Absolutely. So, so that will require, a, not, I mean, I guess you guys will want to review it, but we want to have Tom Mullen. Well, yeah, I and mean, I think more than anything, Tom's got to look at it. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, I hope it's, play, it's you know, uh, Layman's terms enough that I can understand it, but uh, <laughs> no, it should be. It should be. It should be. No, because yeah. people are going to be buying the uh, um, lots, and they should understand what they're getting into, right? I mean, it shouldn't be so complex that it's not a lay person can't understand it. I mean, it's, right. Uh, you know, it's an obligation to to draft it in a simple, comprehensive way that people understand what the rights are. The homeowners association, if it stays private, right? Because, I mean, what. Are, I mean, I, I think the reason, the rationale for needing it a public way makes sense down the road, mm -hmm. but for lots of reasons, it seems like Rick or Rick EA could potentially be something that other people, or you know, in concert with you know other developers, mm -hmm. make happen. And this is never necessary, mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, it's a great you know we're, we're all good. Great. As long as it guarantees to finish the road. <laughs> yeah, well, that, but that's. You know, that, I mean, that's going to be part of the uh, the final approval. You know, mm -hmm. an as-built plan showing yeah. uh, a, a roadway plus a barn. Right. Well, see that. But, that, so, but if it's a private, if, if it ends up such that it's a private right of way, and you, and you nonetheless have given us an as-built, we're not bonding anything at that point. Yeah, but I mean, again, we're going to move towards okay. our aspiration. Is All right. I, I, then, you know, okay. I'm not yeah, telling you what your right. chances are there. Yeah. That's as long as you understand that. A lot of that persuasion of the town is going to have to fall on you guys. Yep. Because that's not, yep. you know, um, and that's why it was important to meet with the selectmen to go okay. over that with them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thanks. All right. Uh, Kirk, do you mind if I leave these with you just so you have them? Or should I grab yeah. them? Well, actually, that would be good if you're going to be submitting them anyway. Yeah, I'll just take them, right? Yeah, well, yeah, go ahead and take, but um, I can leave it. Leave it. Leave it. I'll be yeah, leave it. Okay. Great. So you're going to have to submit copies to, to the office anyway, because i got to forward these to everybody. Absolutely, yeah. Final. So how many do you want? Uh, I need six. Okay. So Larry gets his, yep. usually it'll be seven. Yep. So and then I'll send to the Does other. Does the board want like maybe a reduced set on 11 by 17? Just to just one of those. One. And then okay. I can scan it in as necessary and then get it to everyone. But the, the, the fire department, highway, all, all they like all the large copies there. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks Sorry. for holding in there. Right. For, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck with the, uh, left of it? Yeah. the uh, Todd. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need I make a motion to continue until when are we going? Until November 11th. Okay. Oh, this, I'm sorry. Yeah. This, this item, yeah. A motion we continue okay. until Ten. November 10th. Ten. 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 Second, 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 second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. We'll see this matter on November 10th. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Do we have to do anything else? Yeah, we're going to continue. Uh, Over to Valencia, and then there's a draft letter for the redo, Matt, and then uh, then there was just that one cell tower co-location. All of these are pretty simple, straightforward. Let me just go through the uh, formalities of getting Palencia continued, all right? Yeah. So uh, next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for site plan review application submitted by Elmer Palencia pertaining to the operation of a landscape contracting tree removal operation with open space storage related to uh, supplies, equipment, or vehicles and structures for storing such items on 3.87 acres uh, located off of Newbury Point Turnpike, map 14, lot 22-3. 
BLI zoning district, uh, and the applicant in this case has just asked for a continuance. Continue to the next month. We make a motion that we continue this to the next month. Second question. But uh, before we take a motion, we don't want to entertain what Kevin has to. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is going by there, but they, I don't know how long they intend to continue this, but they're just That's, operating as normal. They're operating. As if, you know, they were before. I right. mean, I'll, I'll uh, I guess I can, I guess that would be Ken to, I have to get Ken to take some. Sorry. To, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, just uh, continue, I'll, it's a mess over there. Yeah. I'll, I'll check with Ken and make sure that. I mean, I do think. You got, yeah, you know. We, I think they got two or three different subcontracts. It's almost like, we, you know, maybe we should ask, take a, take a vote to ask Ken to, to, to investigate. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I was going to have them look into it. I mean, um, let's do it with a vote. It might come yeah. more with Kevin. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, before we want to do that vote before we do the continuance. Yeah. All right. So uh, I, I guess we're going to. Uh, I would propose that we ask the building inspector to uh, to visit the site uh, to determine compliance with the existing uh, ordinance. Okay. Second. Right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, who did it? I it was my motion. Okay. David I'll said. Take sir. Yeah. You can have it. All right. <laughs> Before beauty. <laughs> All right, then uh it's going in the minutes too. <laughs> 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 um That's That's why why motion to continue. Uh, and I'll make, I'll make a motion to continue this item to uh the November tenth meeting. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. And that's a problem. I mean, it's, it's almost like it's better if we don't act on it, because as long as he can do what he wants anyhow, then the less we're, you know, the less he's in front of us, the, the less scrutiny he has of his pro of whatever he's doing out there, you know? Unfortunately, the trail is still across the street. No, I know, and that's, that's creating an old, another issue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it? It makes enforcement no, one another, harder. If you want another one, there's an extra sign down, fine pedal, whatever it is there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Big metal sign sitting in the green space out there. was there. an excavator there yesterday. Yeah, they ripped up the whole but parking lot there. Does it have a light on it? Because there's no light on it. That would be Ken too. Uh, we just can can to ask him to re-grade or just look at the surface. Yeah, but the sign. They just oval it. They sealed it and re-striped it when we were there. They did, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ken, it's not. It has not been a good week for Ken because there's a b bunch of people that have not built. A big problem with people not pulling building permits. Oh. Um, so I got one in the historic district. He, he drove by and the people, guy putting the windows in. I could just ask him nicely and be like, whenever you can get around to it. <laughs> no. It's got to be tough because everything you know. If if somebody else is asking to do it, it's. It's because they don't want to do it themselves and uh, they're, they're complaining, right? So we got a towel. Yep. Yeah, there, well, there's the uh, first, there's this, that letter, it's in the packet. It's the letter we uh, I, we sign every year. Or I um, I write a, um, I guess I, I think Chris signs it, or the chairman signs it. But it's for to support the North Shore Alliance. Is it exactly the same as last year's letter? Same exact letter, except that. I made a motion to accept it. Is that what you're looking for? Is a motion to accept yeah, it? Yeah, to, to basically say, to support the letter. To, uh, to exactly. Say. It's exactly the same as last year's, and we just changed the date. Yeah. Continued support. I made a motion to accept it. I second. And he's second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, unanimous. Uh, Good. And then we have another uh, middle class tax relief cell tower uh, modification. And it's pretty simple. Uh, although I, I, on the packet there you can't, it's hard to see. So I've got it right here. But uh, basically, um, just these three new antennas at about 149 feet, which is. Uh, right here at this level just uh, almost three quarters of the way up the tower so three antennas being added to that level just like one on each panel there yeah one on each panel so it's pretty straightforward but this falls under there's no ground level nothing going on it's just 
co-location. No is, elevation is, increase. Is there additional no. antennas? No. Additional antennas. Okay. And Ken looks at the structural uh, capacity before he signs off on it anyway. So. Make a motion we set the additional antennas at the three-quarter level as presented. Second. So Dave's motion, Ken's second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So. I make a motion we forget about the administrative minutes. Yeah, maybe we can. Well, we're coming to the, the, the short meeting on the 27th. Yeah. I'll definitely nope. read them by then. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, I mean, you're, Why don't you really? put them at, can you put them at the first of the agenda? I can't, yeah, yeah. This um, way they get done. Yeah. I mean, do you want me to start putting them at the, the only thing is I don't like to make them. No, 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 On that meeting, yeah. you could do it. Yeah. And that way that, like, you would go ahead and come in before you have that meeting. It gives a chance for the audience yeah. to get here and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, and it's that's informal. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. All right, well, then, uh, I quit. I We're have to do a it. motion that we adjourn. Second. Okay, oh, I'm all for that, but before we do, uh, and I don't, only because I might have to be on camera, what about that informal meeting we want to set up? Are we going to do something about that? Yeah, the, um, you know, how are talking about you? getting the Board of Selectmen person, maybe conservation, maybe I mean, conservation. I'm trying to get all the departments like this and just pick a time. Yeah. Um, all right. Can we have a full board or no? No, no just two yeah. members. Second, from the well, David, I would absolutely like you to be there. It's an honor. I think. <laughs> by way of saying, I'd rather not. <laughs> so, uh, you have to be quick. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, does anybody else want to get this? Although, it is my, I keep raising this issue. I, I, I am concerned that there's not going to be enough revenue out of this thing to justify what, but you, so know, you should go. Maybe you just volunteer. No, you, you, you got to be there because you take better notes than I do. Okay, I'll go. I, I say things I'm and he okay. writes them down. down. <laughs> well, I, I, don't we, I, I think we did a good thing this morning though by discussing some of those things in advance. I mean, I don't think we passed my bedtime right now. I don't know what I just want to I'm going to just. Keep doing my role of making this thing. I'll use the building string, blah, 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 blah. Good. And high design because they've done it before. Mm -hmm. They want to make money. Has anyone been out to that? Is it called Hatter's Landing in Merrimack Port on, on the Merrimack River? I've never been to Merrimack Port. I know. It's one of those weird. It's, you have to go to Ainsbury towards Maudsley Road and then. It's a. It used to be a mill building, and they've it, they've renovated the mill, but they've also added a bunch of new housing too. And it's right down on the river's edge, and it's a long narrow. I mean, that's nothing like this site, but it, it is. Uh, I don't. You know, I bet you it's it's a rental. It, it look, it's really a nice project. And well, it, the coolest could get his architectural character to be like Partridge. What, what was it? Partridge par, par, uh, par Barry. Yeah. Yeah. It would be good. That, that's. That, that is looks nice like it was all controlled exteriors up there. Yeah, he said they're all single family custom design, but I thought they're all condos. Condos, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, all He could be wrong. Yeah. No, there's a couple subdivisions right there. There's a couple sides. So it's called Hood Farm. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to plow them, that's why I know. <clears throat> Good. Well, then, but Kirk, so just let us do the same thing we always do get as many people as you can and yeah. pick a meeting for Maybe a midday. Try for next Wednesday or next week sometime. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can't have two more than two people there, but I, yeah. you know. But I'll try to get like uh, like Concom uh, Health Department. I might even see if Bernie or like Finance would be somebody. I see a sense of assessor yeah. can, would like to join this. Yeah. Um, Sean. He is so happy with the tree that we put down in front of his office. He says both people. He is happy with it? Yeah. But, oh, it's well, he gets more light on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, He's in that dark corner. Yeah. 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 In November, right? Well, I'm hoping to have everything ready for the different departments to come in and inspect first week in November. But we'll see. Um, Is it just the town you need to get past at this point? You're going to get enough water to get yeah, the bear right off the parking lot. Yeah. 
It's um there I mean it's it's executing the plan approved right now, right? So the plan's approved. Um Stu Dalzell is taking care of the line painting. Is this all?